everybody. I'm George. And I'm Bob. We're the Shipping Goblins from Beetle and Grimms. Today, we're going to talk about the amazing Map Vault Collection. And with the Map Vault Collection, you get a bunch of gorgeous two-sided maps, all scaled for standard minis. Yeah, get yours now for the Map Vault Collection from Beetle and Grimm, and all the players at your table will be revved up and hyper because the only thing they'll be able to say is... Yeah. Go ahead and do it. Zorks! Oh, do it again. Zorks! <laughs> Oh. Oh. Who do you think you are? Oh, yes, Mr. Lillard. You're just oh. some yes, sir. You can't oh. just go we, off and use it's my your thing. Uh, com right completely. We just thought. Oh, okay. I'm uh, going to take this right to yes, Beetle. Sir. Hey, Grim. Thank you, sir. What happened? Uh, Matthew Lillard watches our show! And hello, um, we're just going to wait around for the usual kind of getting a nod from any kind of emergency elves that are out there. But hello and welcome to Band of Badgers. I'm Dave, your GM for this evening. And this... You're, you're good. We is, have sound. Is, thank you, Steve. Yeah. Uh, this is Rise of the Rune Lords by Pezo. And these are my beautiful players. How you doing, players? Good, I think. Hello. Nervous. <laughs> hello. Last chapter. It is. It is. It's come down to the wire. Uh, finally, we are we are here with chapter six, first episode of chapter six. Um, what could happen? We've already lost one player. Um, oh, we're, we're who's that? We're out. <laughs> poor Chris, poor Rup. Oh well. Yeah, I miss him. We, we move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a player. Anyway, uh, thank you as always to Beetle and Grim. Uh, most of all, thank you uh, mm. for watching. Um, we, we love we love having you here live, uh, but if not, we love the fact that you've been watching on YouTube. So thank you very much for that. Uh, plus, if you're watching live, stay tuned. We do have a giveaway uh, during the show. We're not going to tell you when. Most of you, if you're regular, you probably know when it is. But if not, keep watching and your, your, your nice little freebie is on the way. Um, but if you would like to support us, you can. We have Twitch Prime subscriptions and, of course, we have our Patreon. All the lovely links our moderator Steve will be putting it into a uh, live chat for you. Oh, thank you, Gant Goblin. You just resubbed. Thank you very hey. much. Theo Grady, Theo. always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Now, if Big you didn't know, Theo. Band of Badgers, what we do here on our shows, we always have guests. Um, we support writers, artists, designers, and creators, large and small, all across the world. Um, so if you have something you want to kind of show off to everyone, you want to get the Badger bump, thank you, Theo, um, then we'll put you out, out there and see what happens. Who knows? We've actually made a lot of, a lot of uh, networks and contacts with people. Um, it's great to see that things are starting to generate for those individuals as well. Um, and it's, fun. it's it's just absolutely fantastic. If you would like to see any of our older content or even this content, you can. It's all on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash band of badgers. Um, hit the like, ring the bell, subscribe. Subscribe is a very good one. Just, you know, you subscribe on YouTube. It would be very, very, very much appreciated. So, now then, players. We had a... Last week, we had our what we call the green room, which is our session zero for each chapter. As we said, this is chapter six. This is the very, the very last chapter. How are we feeling? 
nervous and excited yeah lots of healing (laughs) i am the party healer now oh no that's right (laughs) you'll step up don't worry i'm more worried about spell slots or lack thereof (laughs) definitely lack thereof Um, (laughs) so oh that fills me with so much confidence (laughs) (laughs) so um what we're gonna do, we're gonna do, we're gonna do what we normally do on the the first uh, episode of every chapter, um, and this will be the last time I have to do it. So listen carefully. This is the last time you get any clues. Um, and you, the audience, if you've missed anything, not only if if any of this what I'm about to say sounds interesting, you can check it all back out on our YouTube channel. Everything's there. Everything's labelled into chapters. It's a lot of fun. Do go check it out. So this adventure began when our heroes take part uh, in the Swallowtail Festival in a town known as Sandpoint. Yet as the celebration draws to a close, a band of goblins attacks. The heroes fight off the invaders and establish themselves as heroes. But when the local bartender Amiko Kajitsu goes missing, the town turns to the heroes for help. Rescuing Amiko reveals a conspiracy. Turns out that her estranged brother is involved with a group that has gathered the goblin tribes for an even greater raid on Sandpoint. Intent on offering the town up uh, in sacrifice to the goddess Lamashtu, after tracking the goblins to their lair in Thistletop, the heroes confront the conspirators and defeat their leader. Turns out that she was a bitter Asimar named Nualia, who carries a curious amulet depicting a seven-pointed star. Ta-da. So, <laughs> the star ended up being a clue left behind by a madman calling himself the Skinsaw Man. The heroes eventually confronted the murderer. Turns out that he <laughs> is the brother of Harrison Foxglove. His name is <laughs> Aldrin. They face him in a haunted mansion near Sandpoint. There they learn that he is but an agent of a much larger cult based in the city of Magdamar. The investigation moves to that city where the heroes confront the Skinsaw cult before learning a related danger has taken up residence in an old clock tower. Here, the heroes encounter the true leader of the cult, a sadistic Lamia matriarch. However, unknown to the heroes, this Lamia matriarch has been charged with harvesting souls of greed to aid in the reawakening of an ancient wizard tyrant known as the Rune Lord Karzog. The Lamia's use of the Sihedron Rune, this thing, the same seven-pointed star both Nualia and the Skinsaw Man employed, hints at a much larger threat. The heroes are then sent into central Varicia to investigate why a bunch of rangers of uh, remote Fort Rannick have gone silent. They arrive to find the fort overrun by ogres and the surviving rangers have been held prisoner by a degenerate ogre king. By rescuing the rangers, the heroes liberated the Fort Rannick and start then to piece together what's really going on in the region. Then, after dealing with a flooding town, a failing Thessalonian dam, they finally arrived on the upper slopes of the infamous Hook Mountain, where they confront and defeat the ogres and learn of a powerful stone giant named Mokmurian. Turns out he's planning a raid on there on Sandpoint. The heroes return to Sandpoint to help defend against Mokmurian's raiders, then they take the fight to Jorgenfist, the fortress of the stone giants. By infiltrating this citadel and defeating Mokmorian, they not only uh, they not not only end the threat of the massing army of giants, but also discover that Mokmorian was but another agent of Runog Kurzog, and that the Sahedrin rune is a symbol he is utilizing to aid in his return to this world. Yet, there's still some time before Kurzog can fully regain his powers. Using McMorian's Library of Thessalonian Law, the heroes learn that the key to Kurzog's defeat may well be hidden in a lost dungeon called Runeforge. 
The route to that dungeon was hidden in a dungeon below Sandpoint. The PCs once again returned to Sandpoint in search of that information, finding it in a recently opened shrine to Lamashtu, guarded by an ancient lunatic from the time of Fasalon itself. Following the clues they find there, the heroes then head north and enter the dungeon of Runeforge. After gathering components, they utilize the magical pool at Runeforge's heart, transforming their weapons into potent Runeforged weapons, quite capable of providing significant advantages in the final battle to come. <coughs> Armed with the weaponry they need, the heroes then make the journey into the Kodor Mountains to confront Kurzog in his ancient city of Zin Shalasts. Now the heroes are going to need all of their wits, all of their magic, and all of their might to prevail. For Kurzog, it's coming. And that is where we end this. That's where we pick up. That's where we're going to stop. <laughs> so, at the end of last week's rune, uh, green room, um, you have arrived in the Kodor Mountains. You don't quite know where you are. It's nice and blistery and blustery. Um, somewhere among these, uh, I was going to say mountain peaks, but somewhere along in this high altitude, snow blindness, storm weather, what do you wish to do? Okay, so... <clears throat> the, the picture is, we're, we're there. Bad weather. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that um, Silic would be able to do from like a, a survival or a wilderness perspective to at least, you know, get a bearing on possibly some some like cover or a direction that we would need to head in at least you know you know from the last session you are there you're trying to find Vekka's station or Vekka's cabin whatever it might be uh, who are dwarves and you, that's it you are on a pathway somewhere deep in snow especially um, Elias especially Siluk you are knee deep in snow. It is dark. It is blistery, howling down with wind. The cold is finding every kind of gateway it can to your skin through all your layers of armor. Okay. You're saying we turn back and take the mines of Moria instead. <laughs> <laughs> and that just so happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This definitely um, was the only way, though, yeah? <laughs> the, yes, I mean, um, Professor Quint, Elias, and Zamba managed to create the spell to, to take you to where they think the cabin is. Are there any trees nearby? There are uh, lots of trees. Basically, you're, you're, you're shielding yourself from the snow and the wind. is blistered into your face. Okay. So uh, st standing will, uh, around will, will, will not help. But there's, a, there's, um, there's definitely a few trees. There's trees, there's mountains, there's snow, there's stars. Doesn't, gonna, how doesn't gonna someone find have it? a shelter, a magic shelter thing? Or are we I just going to push through? Well, we, we need to push on anyway. We need to find this Vecca station. Yeah. Um, because we hope to be able to find some information there that will then tell us the exact path to Zoom Celeste because it's only rumoured that they found it. We don't know how to get from there to here. The plan was we find their base station, try and raid it for info that will tell us how to get it to Zoom Celeste. So yeah, I do I do have the mansion, so we can always revert to that, but we do need to find the cabin. Harrison, are you thinking about uh shimmying up one of them trees yeah well i was i was uh, i was readying up my grappling hook and just kind of like you know spinning it ready to kind of uh fire up a tree um and find a big tree to climb up uh, uh, i so... hope the wind isn't too strong and it blows back in your face brother That's well, right. just gonna start getting the bandages out now. Uh, and silic silic will just be looking around trying to hunt and track looking for maybe some tracks in the snow yep 
Um, yep. If he can find anything from that perspective, and he's going to basically indicate Bear should be on this scent. Yep. Okay, I, I'm going to be somewhat inspired by Harrison. You, you might want to mark this down on the calendar. <laughs> and, uh... I don't have any spells to deal with that. Oh, no, wait, maybe I do. I might have regeneration. <laughs> Uh, Father, tell us about how this tradition started. <laughs> I'm going to cast fly. Excellent. Ooh. And I, I'm I'm going to do it on myself just so I can get out of the the snow. Oh. <laughs> I'll do you a favour. What I'll do is I'll take that grappling hook and I will fly it up to the top of the nearest tree. With me on it, or just on its own? Just on its own. Oh, okay. Uh, you can still climb the tree. Yeah, that will give you a level of satisfaction that I can't give you by flying you up there. Okay, so okay. Elias, you cast fly. You yep. grab uh, the grappling hook. Maybe about twelve foot up. Uh, you're looking about a twenty, you know, twenty tall foot trees. It's just a few of them dot, dotted around. Um, but what I'm going to say is the wind is battering you. It's being swooshed around by the valleys and the turnoffs upon these mountains. And as it comes hurtling down, it's like you were trying to sprint uphill, like a, like a really steep... You, you kind of overcompensate and then you go too much as you try to concentrate on flying up. You do manage to do it um, while you're there, just off in the distance, maybe about 100 foot or so. Um, visibility is quite poor, but you can see what appears to be the side of the mountain... And which which is normally you know jaggy and rocky, you see what appears to be a square shape, a uniform shape. Definitely man-made, not natural. Yeah. Right. Um, what we'll do is because the wind's obviously oh, you know stronger at higher elevation, I'm gonna fly back down. Um, look, there's there's something up further from maybe maybe a hundred, maybe two hundred yards. It's definitely man-made. It's not natural. It's it's too uniform in shape to be natural. So, I suggest we head in that direction and, and hope that um, it's it's the cabin. If it isn't, then maybe we'll uh, I'll cast uh, magic mansion and we can get some shelter for the evening at least until dawn. Maybe the wind will drop off and we'll be able to look around. Sounds like a plan. It's it's something mm -hmm. ahead. Uh, and what I'm going to do is not going to go back in the snow. I'm just going to fly just over the top. Uh, of the snow layer. Are you going to so fly like fly horizontal way. just above, or just walking? <laughs> no, no. I'm going to fly horizontal like Superman. I was, I was going to say, do you ever have those dreams where you're flying, but you can only fly across yeah. across the floor? Yes. <laughs> Loads. <laughs> and, and I want to go fast enough so I get the little curly cue eddies coming off yeah. the back of the coat. You know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Everyone's following. I, I assume Elias is taking the lead. Yep. Yeah, I'm finally getting my bloody grappling hook back. <clears throat> Follow the blue blur. Harrison's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hanging on. How uh, how fast is Elias moving? I mean, comparison to the rest of the the group. He he's able to move a lot uh, quicker than you 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 all are. Um, he's still slightly overcompensating by the wind, but because he's staying low to the ground, he's got you know more resistance to it. He's fine. Okay, Elias, don't move too far ahead. I'll, I'll, my fly speed is 20 feet, so I'll just stick at that. Yeah. Okay. And they, unless they're you know, even slower. Oh, everyone's slow. I mean, everyone is pushing against the, the wind. Yeah. You've got uh, all the snow is battering in, into your faces. Okay. Well, okay. Once I've got about 30 feet ahead of them, I'll slow my pace, uh, Magic says. Okay. Uh, Silek, can you roll a d20 for me, please? <clears throat> single, single d20? Yes, please. Dun, dun, right. dun. Let's see what we got. Uh, add nothing to it. It's just a flat 10. Yep. Okay. This is like when your teacher writes something down in class. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. My, per so, my perception is legendary, just to let you, you, know. you probably You probably get, <laughs> um, we'll say you get halfway to, you can start, halfway to the cabin, you can start to see what Elias was talking about. This kind of square shape jutting out of this uh, side of the mountain. Um, visibility is still so poor, you all start to feel the cold ebbing into like your feet, your ankles. It, uh, it just, it's getting uncomfortable. It's getting uh, very difficult to see and you're, you're constantly still pushing on, but you're okay to do that. Silek, you notice that Bear 
starts to slow down a little. He's always walking kind of ahead of you. And he's got, you know, his big furry ass is, is swaying and hunk, hunking down in the snow, taking these giant steps. But moving forward. But you notice where he would normally keep his head up and his ears up and being quite vocal, he's gone quiet. What's wrong, boy? Wait, hold up, everybody. It looks like, uh, I'm not sure what's wrong bear and i'll just kind of back up a little bit and put my hand on sort of the top back behind his head okay he he the, the bear kind of uh, or bear looks up at you and you notice these he's been un uncharacteristically quiet his ears are flat and he's looking he's looking down like he doesn't want to look ahead he's he's trying to avoid going this is probably the very first time apart from when he was a cub, that you have seen Bear scared. Okay, so he's scared. He's not... I don't get the sense he's hurt or mm -hmm. he's under distress because of the weather. It doesn't seem to be the weather. You've, you've been in these kind of conditions before. Um, you, you and Bear, you know, you've been here, not in this location, but you've been in snowstorms before. You'll be fine. You just need to rely on your training. You know what to do. This is the first time, as I said, since he's a cub, that you've seen him scared, physically frightened. I'll just kind of stroke sort of the back side. What's, what's wrong, boy? I don't... I'll look at the group. I, I'm, I'm not sure what's... Uh, I'm not sure what the problem is. He appears to be... Uh, I, I hate to say this, but he, he appears to be frightened. Uh, I'm not... I'm not sure why. I don't know why this area would... What's... What's wrong, boy? It'd, it'd be all right. And obviously I can't communicate any more than that to Bear, so... I'll just be trying to comfort Bear, and I'll just continue to kind of stroke the back, and... I will kind of lift... I will kind of put my hand up under, like, his like his chin and kind of lift his head up, and, and I'll look... I'll, I'll lift his head up to where we're looking right eye to eye to try to, like, give him a sense of... Like, I'm here, like, we're together, like, yep. this is going to be okay. Right? You, you step around in front of him and, and, you know, kind of hug him under the, the chops. And he, he looks at you, he makes eye contact. Um, and it's almost like he's kind of relieved you're there. You know, the the, the, the bond that is between you two, there, there is definitely something there. Um, and he kind of, if, if Bear could laugh or shrugs or shrug something off, he would. So he just kind of nudges you in, into your neck. All right, all right. That's enough. That's enough. It's it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I'll, I'll I'll turn to sort of walk forward again, but I'll stay. I'll stay back with him. I won't just walk away. Mm -hmm. I'm almost trying to like leading him, like waiting for him to kind of take a step, and then I'll take a step. So yeah. he feels more comforted that we're side by side. Yeah, he's he's ha he's still moving. Again, he's he, the the. You know the the bond between you two. He doesn't want to let you down. He will fight through his fear, but he's, he'll still walk forward. He's walking beside you rather than in front of you. Interesting. So I guess I guess I would like I'm just going to be like I guess my brain is racked at this point, right? Like Silic is thinking, trying to think back, like what would be causing this, and just the wheels are spinning, right? But mm -hmm. I. But I assume that I don't have any indication of what could potentially be causing this in Bear. Can I roll a world empathy check to see if I can get anything? Mm -hmm. Good idea. Anything Ooh, more? Nice. Nice. Uh, oh, that's not bad. What do we <laughs> With have? a little tune, too. I like that. Well, why not? Uh, what is my diplomacy? There is. Um, 13 plus 19 is lots. Um, <laughs> it is lots. It's 32. 32. 32. Yeah, 32. Okay. Can I try and kind of get an idea? Can I ask him, is there something, we, is there danger up ahead? Um, do you hear Bear's voice or is it more imagery? Um... I assume it'd be like body language, so he might understand that I'm asking if there's danger, and then he can. I guess he can find a way to communicate yes or no. Okay. 
I would say uh, yes. It, there's definitely some form of danger. You can you now that you're kind of close. If you move over to where uh, Sidek is, you can see <laughs> this animal is scared. Like when most animals get scared, it's a tail between mm -hmm. the legs. It's a it's a dismissive fear, isn't it? It's a head bowed. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. the the limbs start to quiver. He's mm -hmm. not at that stage yet. Right. But if Silek was wasn't there, you'd imagine that this bear would turn around and walk the other way. Fair, quite so. Uh, Elena will just go. We're going to be with you, bear. You're not going to be on your own. And, uh, and you walk go. along on the other side. He just he kind of looks at you as you're walking next to him. He looks looks back at Silek and looks back at you and goes, <laughs> and just kind of <laughs> snorts. Um, it's a big puff of hot air, steam cloud comes out his nose. But it seems to be appreciative. Um, is Helena sharing that with the rest oh, of us? Oh, yes, she is. Yeah. She is going to... There's something, there's something bad up ahead. We need to, oh. need to be careful. Okay, I suggest that we um, are cautious going forward. So I'll go up ahead, behind Elias, obviously. Because uh -oh. <laughs> he seemed off 30 feet in front. But yeah, I'll make a concerted effort to push through a little bit faster than everybody else just so I can, um, you know, be up front. Careful, just in Tolkis. case. Careful, Tolkis. I, uh, I trust Bear's senses. And if he's, if he, <laughs> if Bear's afraid, uh, we should be careful and we should approach silently as possible. You're not invincible, Tolkis. No, oh, no, not we need yet. Need you to take down Kozel. Not yet. There's that will come. <laughs> and, and yes, I trust Bear too. Um, so I, I think we should be cautious going forwards. Um, I won't go too far ahead, obviously. Um, but uh, yes, if I, I assume we're kind of trying to keep single file anyway, aren't we, to carve a path through the snow? Because yeah. if we were walking side by side, it'd be like everyone's putting in maximum effort. But if I go first, I can carve out a bigger area for everybody to fall behind, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Well, at the moment, Elias is leading and he's flying. Oh, in fact, if um, if Harrison, Harrison, you still got that battle axe that I lent you? Yes, you can have it back if you need Harrison, it. Harrison, toss me the battle axe I lent you. Okay. Not um, literally, though. <laughs> well, he's, 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 about, he's about to chuck it and then realises, no, he don't think he means that. And, I know uh, your luck, brother. <laughs> yeah. And yeah just, I'll uh, take that. And um, and what I do is I, I I just sort of like punch it into the air and the head just explodes into flame and it's like burning hot. And I just put that in front, sort of melting the snow as we're going through, just to make it a little bit easier. So, like, think of that episode of Top Gear where they put flamethrowers on the back of that ice-clearing machine thing. That was cool. Anyway. <laughs> but do I notice that? Do you notice the flamethrowers that Tolkos is doing? <laughs> uh, not if you're in front, no. Okay. Harrison is completely uh, perplexed by this because he didn't realise that, that he could do that with the battle axe and it's like, <laughs> why did I need to know about that? Because the last time we gave you any flame, you blew up a yeah. tower. <laughs> Can't be trusted. <laughs> Your record with flames is not good. Uh, <clears throat> how far are we again from being able to, from this area? We can see it. You can see it. You I'm, definitely I'm see the shape now. It's, um, you can see, it's, it's only 50 feet away. It's definitely a building. Um, okay, it's a stone, stone shaped square building. Um, and from where you are, you can see that there is snow piled up against the various kind of corners of the building, the corners of the of the building where it goes into the walls, um, and what appears to be like two big double doors. Everything else is just kind of uh, black. It's just you know the visibility is so poor. Okay. If we can see this building, then Silic would definitely, out of <clears throat> like hunting instinct, would definitely yell to Tolkis um, to put out the flame because I'm afraid that they're going to see us and they'll see us approaching. Okay, Silic. So I, I do that and just clear it the old fashioned way by yeah. chopping it up with a bigger axe. <laughs> 
Now I'm starting to see the, the same genes between the <laughs> brothers. Now they seem more like brothers. Um, I guess we keep pushing forward slowly. On way to the cabin, whatever it is. As best we can, keeping an eye out for shenanigans. Okay, so you're about 30 foot away now. And what you can see is it's a, it's a split log tower um, that comes out of the cliff face and rises um, from the, out, out from the ground. So the bottom half is all made of stone and the top half, maybe 60 feet above it, is all made out of uh, just, just wood. Um, wooden, wooden cabin on top. Um, blah, blah, blah. So you can see now as you get closer the the wooden um, structure above is now overgrown with like liching and all, almost appears to be an extension of the rock face. There was no way you was going to see it from a distance. It's blended in. It's almost disguised and camouflaged into this rock. And you've got to remember what Quint was telling you last session regarding this particular place and why they were here. The ground to the south of the, of, uh, um, as you're walking uh, into the lower structure is on a steep embankment as you're going to go up to it. On which um, a chute protrudes from the structure's southern wall. At the base of the embankment is a large pile of fine black sand that seems to spread out across um, almost like a front garden and it's been spread by the we uh, by the years um, of wind and blowing and, and basic erosion that's there the ground surrounding this area is just barren of any kind of plant life with the exception of a single sagging pine tree and that's just so you've got these two double doors everything around it and again the front garden it's like this fine black sand and in the middle just to the right of the two double doors is a is an old tree you can see from where you are now um, especially with Tolkis, Tolkis's help there are faint traces of what appears to be a footpath uh, leading to um, directly to the double doors and then also around to the back so then um, potentially there's another door around the side as well but it's it's clearly obvious that, that no one has been here for years several several years does the footpath go through this like sandy like yeah, area it, it, where the tree yeah. is it, the sand is is covering it over but yes you'd imagine this would have been um quite a well used path i do not like the look of that black sandy stuff i neither uh, maybe we should slip around the back to check if there's any other entrances. As I'll long as we don't pass over it. Um, do it quicker. Channeling his inner rup, um, Harrison will attempt to pick up the sand and, and, and examine it further. Okay. And I know we'll make an H check. When you said channeling your inner rup, I thought you were just going to put some in your mouth. Well, you know, I was I was about to do that, but then I thought, nah, I don't want to do that. Elena will channel a heal spell. <laughs> <laughs> Just prepare. You, you're forgetting that Rob only did that with liquids, Josh. Yes. Yeah. But he did touch everything that he could get his hands on. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah but dangerous. definitely only taste testing liquids. <laughs> yeah. Um, a 33 nature check on the sun. Kind of try and get close to it. Maybe not touch it. Try and discern whether it's just if, sand. If it's just grit salt for getting rid of the snow, <laughs> I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> um so Harrison, you go over and, and start kind of scooping up the sand. Um it feels like sand apart from it's black and it kind of pours through um pours through your fingers, pours off your hands. I've got um, a mental image of Harrison making a sand castle. <laughs> yeah, trying to. It doesn't make any 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 shape. Um, the snow kind of just dissolves on it uh, as it comes down and hits it. You get a few snowflakes on it, and they just they just dissolve. Um, Yelena, you're not sure. I mean, you haven't seen anything like this before, mm. and it only seems to be like you've got this bottom building, a top building. There's a chute connected, like a chimney, connecting them. 
yeah. and this black sand is is gathered at the bottom of this chute, this chimney chute. Does it look like the stone of the building? No. Okay. So they're not having remodeling done, and it's just the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not um, something I've seen before. Yeah, I think we you're right, Silent. We need to be careful. I don't like the looks of it. I'll zoom around the side and see if I can see another door. Okay. Uh oh, I, I don't like it that he's checking the rule book. <laughs> no. Just, yeah. just checking. Uh how far how far away like do we have any sense of how far away this this back side entrances i mean is he 30 feet from us 100 feet from us uh how far you said you were 20 foot ahead elias i was 30 foot ahead when i started yep um and now i'm gonna shoot off around the side of the building so it'll be however far that is away from the front plus 30 feet until they obviously walk up to the start of the black sand okay so elias you go round to the um side door and again, you see piles and piles of snow being pushed up and battered into this building. Um, it appears to be a single door. So you had the two double doors at the front and then you had this single door around the side. Um, you hear, or you turn around, you can see everyone coming up, to, up along the pathway. You see Harrison kind of cupping his hands and playing on the on the black sand. You've walked across it, you've been perfectly fine, but Harrison seems Flag. to be floating. Uh, Harrison seems to be uh, copping it up with his hands. Yelena's having a good look around. Uh, Silek and Bear, Tolkus, what do you wish to do? Um, I will go and have a listen at the two main doors. Okay. Um, do you want me to do a perception check? No, nope, no need. Everybody roll... Um... <laughs> Every yeah. roll initiative, please. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna fight the sand. Yay! Yep. So is that right? Because I was gonna say Silic and Bear would have trailed around the side to get eyes on Elias. Elias. That's so fine. Is that... We'll we'll put you there just as this happens. Okay. All right. So roll initiative, huh? Everybody, roll initiative. Here we go. That sucks. Okay, Elias. 36. Tonkus. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to... Uh, 40, even 40. 16 plus 24, that's 40, isn't it? Or am I really that dumb? Uh, that, that's 30. That's 30. No, so, Did you say 24? Not yeah, 16 plus 24. It's, it's 40, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yelena. 37. Silent. 32. 32. Do you want... Is Bear going on your roll as well? Yeah, Bear is on mine. Yeah. yeah. And Harrison. He does on his own. 40 as well. Okay. Cool. Right. Let's get rid of that. Don't need that anymore. What we are going to do, we're going to switch over to the battle cam if this works. It didn't. That's great. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I can see it. <laughs> um, so what I want to do is grab this. Let's see if I can move that over there. Battle cam is so cool. All right. So let, let's just keep that. All right. Love this. So, Elias, to... you are over here because you went around the side of the building. If you can see yourself there. <laughs> Okay, um, that's where the side entry. Okay. Yeah. Silas, uh, Silas and Bear, you've gone this way to try to kind of catch up with him. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yep. Tolkus, you went up to the front door to, to listen in. Triggered the alarm. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, everyone else was, was coloured in partially, so um, I, I've made you this one now. Okay. okay. Just so you can see the bright orange person. Um, and Harrison, you're playing in sand. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Elias, you noticed this. You noticed this kind of tree that was there on its own, surrounded by the black sand. Um, and it was just kind of hanging and swaying. There's no leaves. It's just like dead branches. However, when Silic and Bear, as you go past, 
uh, it doesn't seem to, to, to bother Bear, but Psylocke, you kind of look once and then look twice, as this, you realise it's not moving in the wind. It's not being pushed by the mm. wind. It's a actually tree? started, a tree is starting to move towards you. <laughs> and what you see oh, it's tree bit. <laughs> yeah. Is this huge tree. Oh my god. Starts, Yay! <laughs> starts to come towards you. Um, I thought about checking that tree out. It's a tree really out! Annoying. Togus, you are first. Um, right, how far away from the tree am I? These are five foot squares, so you are... I'll put your land square to make it easy. Five, ten, oh. fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. I'll be just assuming that I've noticed it. Yeah, if you want to. I mean, is Silek and Bear going to scream? <laughs> Are they going to call out in the snow? Can you but, hear Well, them? I think uh, yeah, Silek yeah. already did, didn't he? He's, you you shout what it is, I think. Yeah, like... It's yeah, a tree! Silek's abs- yeah. It's a tree! It's like, Silek screams and yells at Bear to, to turn back around, and, and that that's all I would do. I would just scream the name of what it was. Yeah, so um, I have uh, 30 feet of movement. So did you say it was 25? Yep. So I'll, I'll move up to it and uh, and I'll say something like, what the hell was that sound? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? I just heard something like air horns going off. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll say something like, aha, something that doesn't like axes. <laughs> And I'll pull up my giant fire great axe. <laughs> and uh, I shall take a swipe at him in in the uh, in the way of the powerful attacking. Uh, I can't remember what the hell I get to hit now. It's so stupid. Oh yeah, thirty-one to hit. So I rolled a fourteen on the dice. Mm-hmm. Plus thirty-one to hit. That hits. And that's going to be for power attack. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I, I've, read I've what not happens, used my so. fire one. I've just mm. used my um, my great axe, which has got the frost and shock. Okay. Uh, and it. Fire. Fire. <laughs> it does. <laughs> 42 <laughs> plus 14 damage. 42 plus 40. Did I say 42 or 41? 42 yeah. plus 14 damage. 56. As he gets hit, and the bit of him that gets hit, assuming he's not partially frozen anyway, gets frozen, and then also electricity just shoots out from the wound. Okay, so as, as you're you make contact with this thing. It almost is like it makes a noise. And his arms, it's not just arms, it's got three, four big branches that it's moving. Big branches? Plus, it's not just got legs, it's got roots. This whole thing is like six different legs kind of thing as it's moving towards you all. Cool. Um, and it's like just... Definitely seems to be a, a, um, attacking. So you, yeah, you, strike, you strike first, um, the cold does nothing. You see the frost tsh, go up one of the branches. It doesn't create, it doesn't seem to have the effect that you wanted it to, but the electricity, tsh, you see it scatter, almost dance across the ice that you've generated on this, this arm appendage. Um, and the thing, almost as if it bends and howls in pain as you strike it. Anything else? Yeah. No, that's it, because um, one action to move, two actions for power attack. Okay. So that's it. And then I'll stand there looking all pleased with myself. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna with my axe, like, like mm. There a little bit. Smug right. face. Mm. <laughs> there we go. So, next up is Harrison. Um, so, um, I will uh, activate my new um, lightsaber, the Shocker, <laughs> and uh, wield both my non... or at least we didn't find out what happened to my other short sword. I may not have it back from um, Elias yet, 
Um, so I will assume that I haven't, so I will just activate my single short sword, um, the shocker, and uh, attempt to attack it um, and see what happens. So that's a 5 plus 30, 35. Yeah. Okay, so um, that is. Uh, 10 plus 8, 18 points of standard damage yep. and 2 points of shock damage. Okay. Um, and that was my... So I moved up to it. That was my first uh, action. Then the second action was attacking. I'm also going to attack with a minus 3 penalty because I've got the, the feet to do that. Go um, and we'll see. Oh, nat 20. So, I don't know what happens oh, with nice. a nat 20 oh, and a minus 3. The first, nat, the first nat 20 <laughs> first of nat 20, uh, the yeah. session. Nice. Like the entire 10 months. But <laughs> hey, <laughs> let's, let's see what happens. We'll use the uh, official crit critical hit, hit deck. <laughs> right. Um, and you're using your sword. Yeah, it's the same, the same shocker um, sword again. Oops. So it's this. No, did I? Oh, I did. Right, sorry. <laughs> I actually put the cards in the wrong box. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that doesn't make sense. That can't happen. Um, there we go. Right. Here the we weapon go. disappears. Ooh, okay. This actually won't happen because of the, the enemy you're fighting. Uh, because it says you push the enemy back five feet, it does not work. So what I'm going to say, with your with your um, natural 20 damage, so roll your damage, and we're yep. going to say that you're going to hack off one of these appendages. Sweet. Nice. So that is uh, 5 plus 8, so 13 standard and 3 sh uh, shock damage, electricity. Okay. Yes, brother, give him the shocker! <laughs> So that the first attack was a was an upward strike, the second one was a downward strike, and I'm, I'd be like, "You will face my shocker." And I don't know what that is, but it's uh, it's I'll have to get used to uh, saying the shocker in real in in, uh, in in combat. Okay, right now it's so you knock you manage to cut off one of the appendages of this tree. It does not like that. It rears back again, almost as you cut for it, it kind of wags it around and then comes to slam attack you this time. Okay, so this I'm ready. This, this, oh dear. Slam. Um, oh shit. Uh, 34. Does a 34 hit? That is exactly my AC. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so... Oh no, oh, you're kidding! <laughs> I get 4d6 and I rolled 3 ones. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> It's that magical dice set we said today, you, isn't it? It's in our favor. It's, it's um, okay. actually not rolling a character. Yeah. It's it's actually 23 damage on the first hit. Okay. Uh, second hit is a 42. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, that definitely hit. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Uh, that's a 28 damage. And okay. lastly, Tolkus is. Oh, hold on. Got to roll to hit first. Tolkus, this one hits you. You see, you see him twice hitting Harrison. Boom, boom. And you're just concentrating on on seeing Harrison get hit, and his other appendage again just comes down in the. Comes out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere. Yeah. Think, think the tree from Harry Potter. Um, yeah. That's one ping willow. Yeah. This is a thirty-six to hit. A veritable encyclopedia of fantasy movies. And yep. 36. There's a 36 hit. Oh, you know what? That's exactly my armor class. Well done. <laughs> Funny that. Oh, oh, here we go. Two, two damage. There we go. There two, we da go. two damage. Yeah. No, no. no. 12, uh, 18, 21. Oh, wow. 21. Oh, wow. 36 damage. Here we go. Oh, <gasps> that's a bit rude. Yeah, right. I finally hit Tolkus. Um, <sighs> Yelena, followed by Elias, please. You knocked me below 200 hit points. I sunk Is... your battleship. <laughs> um, Cheers, everybody. If only. Chapter I, I 6. Don't know where to, I don't one. know where to go with that, so never mind.
right, um, is there a way I could move up and cast possibly a cone-shaped spell without burning my party alive? Try it first, and then we see who gets burned. <laughs> and then we see how many people I have to heal afterwards. Yeah. It's quite a bit taller than people, <laughs> isn't it? It's big. Yes. So I could angle it up. This, this so is we, this is large. Um, it's it not may quite be twenty foot. Yeah. It may be singed their hairs, but I don't care about that. Desperate uh, not gross. to make extra work for herself after this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Sean T W. Subscribe. Um, okay, so I am going to cast burning hands. Yeah, Sean. Hopefully it's gone away. Um, so I believe that's a reflex save. From you. A reflex. Oh, I don't I get... believe. Oh, I don't have good reflex. Okay. Yes, basically. Oh, reflex. that's that's. I got nine. Um, that's that's how surprisingly. Bad it is. That's a fail. Yeah. It's uh, a slow-moving, lumbering tree. Uh, six points of fire damage. Okay. Not much. Well, let's wait and see. So, you cast uh. Your flame <laughs> above everybody's he heads, basically. Uh, you know, missing <laughs> above Tolkus. Silence yeah. a dwarf, so it's fine. Harrison's <laughs> still playing in the sand. He hasn't done anything yet. I've probably just uh, seen. Oh, actually, Harrison, he's, he's... Harrison jumped over, didn't he? He's he did. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm kind of amazed in, uh, uh, by, by this because obviously now uh, Yelena and him are in a thruple. Um... <laughs> the, 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 the thruple. <laughs> You'd said that still before she'd done burning hands, she'd have been difficult even as well. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> right. So uh, you, you do that. The top of the tree bursts into flame. <laughs> You've done a lot more damage than you actually thought you were going to do. That worked well. Maybe try to fire everyone. Fire good. Okay. Elias, followed by Siluk. Uh Seeing Yelena's success with uh, with burning hands, I am uh, going to use fire spell as well, but I'm going to use produce flame. So I'm going to uh, uh, manifest a small fireball in my hand and I'm going to throw it in the direction of the uh, now flaming tree uh, that's hitting armor class 36. Okay. That hits. That's five. And then roll them two again. For another five, ten. Steve has so many dice he's disappeared. Oh, there That's 28, 28 <laughs> points of damage. 28 points Jeez. of damage. Boom. Okay. That's fire damage as well. Yep. Yeah. Is it? Is this? This was just a. Poof. Is this a just flame a, thrower? A ball of fire. Yeah. A ball and of fire that it. I throw um, at, so, a, at a his body. Splashes across his torso. Things ignite. Xerxes Rex. Xerxes Rex. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but thank you for following the channel. Xerxes thank you. Um, okay, so you, you've, you basically, it's a fire snowball, and you chuck it into this thing. It bounces off the top of the head. You see singes and bits of, uh, I was gonna say leaves, bits of twig just burst into flame and, and start to settle down that snow. The whole corner of this building um, is glowing from this tree. The amount of fire that's on the top half of the street starts to slowly spread down the tree. You can hear it scream, it's in pain, but it's still thrashing out at everybody. Silo can bear, what would you like to do? Uh, I've oh, got another go. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shout, Silo, Silo, Tolkus, push it away from the building so it doesn't set the cabin on fire. Oh, uh, and then I'm going to cast a shield on myself, please. Okay. And that, that's my go done. Silo can bear. Okay, so <clears throat> first thing I'm going to do... Uh, is use an action to activate Hunt Prey. Mm -hmm. um, so that's up and operational. <clears throat> now what we'll do is all yell at... Only the top of this thing is on fire, right? Yeah. It's... Okay. Um, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna have... have uh, I'm gonna yell to Bear... Um, to basically spin around, because I assume we're base to base, right? Like we're we're in striking this. Bear yep. has a ten foot reach. Yep, Bear is there. He's already noticed. You, you're you're aware this thing has just come marching out, and everyone's fighting. Okay. So you're there. You just haven't had your attack yet. 
All right, Bear's going to take, um, I use a second action to have Bear attack, and he's going to attack with, he's going to attack with his claws. Mm -hmm. So, do a roll on that. Forty-two. Forty-two hits. Nice. Okay, so that hits. Yep. Um, that actual attack will do. Oh man, double crits! Good lord, awesome. Uh, <laughs> nice. That's uh, that's twelve, uh, fifteen points of damage. Yep. I then will use a. <clears throat> um, I use the second action to attack again, and I. This is a rule I have to ask you, Dave. The second attack for bear, do you want to rule that as a second, a true second attack with a negative modifier? Or... Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's just easier, right. easier to do the same rules for, for everything. Okay. So I will... Um, um, actually, no, take that back. I activated Hunt Prey first. Because, so that first action was... That uh, first attack for him was for free. That's fine. Sorry. Okay. Um, so now I will do the actual second action for mm -hmm. for bear, and I'm going to attack. I'm going to do the claws again, and that would be a 34 to hit. That hits, yeah. Okay, and that would be that be another 10 points of damage. Ooh. Okay. Um, That's good. Now, because the last attack from bear was a claw and it was a success and i made another one into success i am bear is now capable of grappling this tree so bear is just going to basically like bear hug grapple the bottom part of this of this tree yep to try to kind of hold it stabilize it in place yep um that's and that's fun. that's all that he'll do okay um well, technically, I do have. Um, technically, Bear's going to take one more attack with his jaws, but that'd be a disadvantage. Okay, go for it for that for that second action because now he's grappling it, and that again is a uh, thirty-four to hit. That hits. And that is seventeen points Ooh, of damage nice. for the jaws. Okay, and then yep. for with, with the with the bite attack, you see bear. He just takes a chunk out of the tree, and it's just dry bark. It's like dead wood, and spits it out. There's a huge gash inside this tree. But again, you can see the flames are just eating up this tree. All bark, all bite. Yep. All right. Oh, bite. All right. Okay. And then um, uh, this thing's big enough. I would assume I could take a ranged attack with my crossbow, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's in front of you now, so it's big. It's it's chunky. You can you can hit and at close range, and you would definitely not miss. Thank okay, you. So I'm gonna take a I'm a third action. I'm gonna take a shot with my my yep. crossbow. Go for it. Thank you, Captain Indifferent, for following the channel. Uh, Thank you. Okay, here's my crossbow. All right. Uh, um. Ah, shitty roll. But I think I still hit. Uh, 32 to hit. Yep. Go for it. <laughs> nice. Okay. That would be... Sorry, there's so many things that have to happen now. <laughs> 28 points of damage from that. Oh, nice. Wow. And at nice. Yeah. Okay, five so points of five points of that is electricity damage. Okay, so you see the bolt. Um, you don't even you don't even aim. It's like you hip fire. 
this bolt explodes into the trunk of the tree. It's still below where it's where it's burning. And you just see this gaping hole and then just as it discharges, you see the uh, electricity where uh, Tolkus had done the frost on the appendage. It just disappears into the tree and then you see it dance back out down this one arm. Uh, practically explode in it as it, as it does so. You just see it burst. Top of the round, Tolkus followed by Harrison. So, I'm gonna guess it's vulnerable to fire and electricity then. Uh, just based on what we've seen. This, based on what you've seen, yes. I mean, this yeah. this tree, half of it, uh, the top half is being consumed by flame. You can see the flame is is moving down. You know, if you've ever heard, had a match deck, you just see it just eating up the fresh wood. Right. I am actually going to treat it like a tree and try and chop it down mm -hmm. kind of thing. So chop its legs, whatever, whatever's on the ground sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I'll take a big sideways swing and come in with a power attack. Go for it. Um, and it is grappled. So bears, bears grappling it. Yeah, I, I was hoping he's kind of slightly off the floor. You're, or he's you're, you're kind of almost almost on opposite sides almost oh uh, yeah yeah so i can hit it without hitting bear yeah yeah because that would not be good right i rolled to hit i rolled a four on the d20 which hits an armor class of 35. yep <laughs> nice uh, and it's gonna be Bring it down, Tolkus. <laughs> I swear the electronic dice roller, which we cannot name for reasons that might be obvious to some, is cheating because it just rolled 42 on my damage again. So it's the same <laughs> damage as before. So it's four, 42 plus um what did I say before? 14? Yep. Okay. Yeah, 14s. Okay. It's 8 plus 6. Oops. Yeah. That was wrong. Um, so that's power attack. And then I'm going to do... Um, and, yep. and it's on one of the appendages that's on the floor, which I'm guessing is like a leg, yep. you know, sort of thing. Um, and that that's going to do a big gash again, freeze it slightly, but not do very much of that. But it's going to send out a big electrical shock again in, it, in that appendage. Um, and then I'll... That takes uh, two, two actions. And then I've got one action left which I should do um, Brutal Finisher at a minus five to hit. Better roll more than five this time. Bested. Aha! Ne nearly, nearly bloody critical. 19 on, on the nice. dice to hit. Definitely hits. Um, and this one doesn't quite do as much damage because it does two less D12. Oh, and it's rubbish. So that does um, 24 plus 14, which is 38 damage. Okay. And again, that's on the same appendage, assuming it didn't blow up after that first hit. Okay, so okay. The, the first attack, you swing. You basically cleave the bottom half from the top half. Bear is still holding this thing. The, 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 the lit tree, Bear is still hugging it. Uh -huh. Uh, as you cleave the bottom half, and then to make amends, you just go, and then a double finisher move. You, you so the first, the, the second attack, you split the root, you just clean, it's a clean chop, and the finisher move, the bottom half of this tree trunk, you just cut it in two, as if like a lumberjack. Bear awesome. is just holding this tree, and just drops it down onto the floor. Oh, my axe to the air, and I'll say, brutal finish. <laughs> Bear just spits out on this tree onto the onto the ground. It's just laying in there, flashing around, uh, without its legs basically, and just burns away until it just stops moving. Okay, it, it did fall gone. away from the building, right? It's falling away from the building. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It falls bear, into the building. <laughs> it can't. It couldn't get past Bear. So the bear just okay. Nice. It that grapple worked. Oh, and just so you know, wherever you are on HP on it, uh, minus two more. I forgot something. There's two more points of damage that should have came off. Okay. I'll take everything we can get. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you wish to do? It's burnt it. Is it is it stopped moving? Yep. Oh bugger. 
Mm. And then you notice the uh, the cold slowly start to seep in, the darkness as the flames start to to die out, and the heat from this. But it's not dead, right? Tree. It's dead. It's it's dead, dead. Oh, it's dead, dead. Okay. Yeah. It, did. it didn't even get a we are group moment. No. I was going to see if maybe Elena could talk to it. Yeah, that's why I asked. I was like, <laughs> damn, I was hoping we could sort of like put it on the edge and then get some information out of it, but never mind. Not sure why well, empathy works quite like that, but I would have been willing to try it. But I don't think it's going to work on a dead plant. Oh, that's two extra points, damn it. That's <laughs> what it was. Someone, someone give it mouth to mouth. Gone. You're up, Barry. <laughs> you can have a throttle with that one instead. Mm. Awesome. Uh, Good job, guys. I'm going to uh, go straight for the door. I don't think we need sneak anymore. Yeah. No. Go. Harrison's going to go back to the sand. <laughs> Big door or little door? I'm going to go for little door. When I was okay. Going. Yeah. I'll follow. I'll follow to the little door as well. Yeah. Yeah, same. I'll follow around and possibly drag Harrison by the scruff of his <laughs> neck. Okay, okay. I'm not sure if I'm older sibling or mother at this point. <laughs> if you use that um, cone flame thing on him while he's standing in the sand, it might make the sand turn to glass on his feet and he'll be stuck there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I'm concerned about the reading. No, it's, it's, mm. that, that's perfectly fine. No, <laughs> it's Dave, not. Dave's just number crunching. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. right, okay, so mm -hmm. this is how many hit points they have. Yeah. Okay, so the, ball. <laughs> the, the the room Fireball. on uh, the sorry the room on the side. Uh, there it goes. Um, so single door. Who is going first, Elias? I'm, I'm going to listen at the door. Uh, see if it's locked yeah. and, and then open it. Okay. So I rolled a perception check. Yep. Uh, that is a 38. Yep, 38. You hear nothing inside. Okay. And thank you, Loon Call, for following. Uh, is, is the door locked? The door is not locked. I will <laughs> open it up then. Okay, um, the door's the door's pretty battered and pretty old. It's it's very weathered, and um, as you step inside, the room is a bare blank plank floor. Um, you see, I will show you what you see. <laughs> Let's just angle the this bit up a little bit. Du -du -du. Let's change it over to here. There we go. So Elias, here's you. You've gone in. Look, get over the door. I don't open the door like that. And then you go in. So you are in this chamber, okay? Now everyone else is outside. Does that give you a good a, a good enough view? I can stay there. The door the door's open. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. I'll follow Elias. Yeah, I'm following with everyone. Yeah. Okay. So you go well just use Elias for now. You go into into this room. Um, it's 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 dry boards all all round. So the door is managed to keep the weather out. It was a nice strong dwarven door, uh, but the room is dry. The boards still appear to be quite stout. Everything's fine. It looks like um, it's some kind. Of, uh, you can see drag marks in the floor. Now remember, these were dwarves. They were mining something. So the downstairs area, the chute outside. This is some kind of. They bring the ore in for processing. Oh, the black stuff's just probably what the ore is surrounded by or something. Mm. And they get it off of it and then dump it. Yeah. Thinking about it, yeah. Um, so is, it, is there anything in this room at all? <clears throat> no. Is it dusty? It's It's horribly dusty. Okay. And there's no footprints or anything other than our own. No. Well, and then I assume the we do see that other door, right? You can you can see the drag marks on the door, yeah. Did it, uh, sorry, the drag marks on the door, or the drag marks on the floor. Oh, sorry, the floor. Okay, and uh, where where did the drag marks go to? Do they go to the other door out of the room? They go around the corner. So where is my pen? So they seem to go from here. 
and yeah. up to this door, you assume they go across. This is just like a, a it would have been a curtained off area. Uh, there's a single bed here, but the yeah. curtain is since you know moth eaten, turned to yeah. to rotten. There's a horrible smell of musk, but other than that, there's, there's nothing in there. Okay. Um, do we want to have a search in this room? Just have a search of the bed area in case there's anything in here, or, or otherwise yeah. follow the the dread marks. I'll walk over and pick up the mattress and look under the mattress, the bed. Okay. Uh, you find a dagger. Hmm. A dwarven ceremonial dagger or a standard dagger? A standard ordinary dagger. Hidden under Well, it looks like uh, someone stashed a dagger here. I uh, have no need of it. I have my ceremonial. Uh, would anyone seems, like it? Seems like a funny place to keep a dagger. Well, you never know. <clears throat> and, well, who's standing next to me? We're all in this room, right? Mm. Yeah, we're yeah, all yeah. standing next to each other. Yeah, it's just, yeah, just a big group, group, group of you. I'll hand the dagger to Harrison, actually. Yeah. And uh, uh, interest you at all? I have my own, but I, it, I'll take it. I'll give it to someone else if, if anyone else needs it and just offer it round. <laughs> don't, don't <laughs> just sort of run around like this for the day. <laughs> yeah. Harrison, it but was I mean, a gift. You don't need to seem ungrateful. <laughs> oh no, I, I I appreciate the gift. Uh, I will I will just pocket it and uh, put it away. I thank thank you for the gift. And, and nothing that we would like. This is a standard dagger. Like there's nothing that I'm picking up on and holding the dagger and looking at the dagger that it would indicate that it was anything more than a basic dagger. No, it's a dagger. It's okay. You know, you just think about the location. It was a dagger hidden under a rotten mattress. That's all. Okay. I didn't realize it's short sure yet. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those moments where it's like, it's just a dagger. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dagger. The mattress is the real magical item. <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's a flying carpet. Yeah. yeah. Or it's a mattress of ever producing money. I was going to say, you put, yeah. a dra- you put the mattress down, you lift it up, there's another dagger. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Hey, well, whilst. Uh... Silek is checking out the mattress and, and the bed area. I'll listen at the next door, please. Okay. Perception check. Um, so that is a 40. Nice. Nice. You hear nothing. Is the door locked? No. I shall swing it open. Okay. Uh, it doesn't quite swing open. Um, you know, a bit of uh, a bit of damp moisture air has gotten to it. Um it makes a lot of noise as you push this door aside. It's uh, a large creaking noise. Yep. Yeah. So now we we put you in here. Yeah. So this is um, the air. The air in this long sealed chamber is putrid. the The back wall of the uh, um, the back wall is solid rock of the cliff face. So literally the the walls they've put up against the, the rock, the cliff. Yeah. A ramp rises from the western door to a height of five feet, which is the elevation of the rest of the plank floor. There are mounds of dust and rocky debris clutter the floor, while rusty mechanical uh, equipment, large copper tanks, several uh, rock-crushing t- uh, chipping tools sit upon sagging wooden tables. The handle of um, shovel sticks from the debris pile immediately below the, at this aperture. Two piles of, of elbow length thick leather gloves stained from long use hang from hooks behind the north doors. So, um, taking a guess, this is a forge of some sort. This is um, where you would take the ore. Like if you imagine coal and then you turn it into diamond. Processing you, room. Yes, it's a processing room. It's a, f- a furnace room, sorry, not a forge, a furnace. Yeah. yeah. So you'd be melting down the ore, you know, taking the slag off the top, refining the pure material. Yeah. It's a, an ore separation room. Okay. So have a, have a think about what the process might be. Is it uranium? <laughs> no. Were well, you just making a nuclear bomb? Mm. Are we tickling the dragon's tail? 
<laughs> yeah. Um, Would you say Silic? It would be awkward if it was something else. <laughs> Would you say that Silic... Um... Would this smell be putrid to Silic, or would Silic, as being a dwarf, have any indication to what he's seen at this point, or smelling at this point? Uh, Silic or bear? Ooh. Um, let's go Silic specifically. Okay. Uh, no, I mean the 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 this room has has hasn't been open properly in in years. And you know it's stale air. It's it's a very rotten smell. But there's nothing actually rotten in here. No. 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 As in, um, let me be more specific. There's no rotting flesh-based life forms in here. Not anymore. What? Is it a sulfur type smell? No. So, are there any bones or anything? Is is it, is there a furnace or a crucible or something that we can go and check? So for for bones, silent. for ash. As as you're kind of uh, having a sniff in the room, as everyone's kind of walking around <laughs> investigating what this is, silent. In the corner of the room. And remember, this is dark. There is no windows in in this area. Okay, this is this is a pitch black room unless you've you've got a way of seeing. Yeah, but I'm room. pretty sure we all have. But yep. Does 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 I have some? I got dark vision. What dark you, vision. you haven't got dark vision? What, Josh Harrison? I, Harrison what? I, doesn't. I, I don't. Um, my goggles got wiped when I was uh, dipping myself in the water. But you didn't pick it up in the um, the feet tree because you can pick, even as a human you can get dark vision. No, I didn't. Oh, didn't. oh beginner. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll activate the light on my um, compass. Okay, so from the light of the compass, it starts to create shadows. Silent from your position in the room, looking in one of the corners as you're kind of looking around, you notice movement hunched over in the corner with his back think about um Blair Witch hunched oh, over in the corner of the room is what appears to be a dwarf who's Wait. there I can see you as you say who's that there? the dwarf like turns around and he's 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 really gaunt he has cuts um, on his flesh, his his skin is all sucked in to his. To, he's got. He's still got his big beard, and he's got his kind of um, two big tufts <laughs> of beard hair, gold clasps around the bottom of them. But he has no eyes; they're just sunken hollows. And he's picking stuff up off the floor, and he's shoving it into his mouth. And you see this. He's biting what appears to be rocks. Or stone, and um, then you see with the with the use of Elias's light, every now and then it's picking up. It looks like he's eating gold, and it's gold dust that starts to come and fleckle into his beard. And you hear, not necessarily in the room, but more in your head. And he says, "You, you have to try this. It's so." It's so delicious. <laughs> and he, he eats some more and then he slowly fades away. What? Fades away like, like a ghostly visage fades away? Mm -hmm. Did we see that as well after he initially said... Yeah, did anybody else see this or just me? So you, you see and hear Psyduck ask who's there then you hear him say what but we don't see what he's looking at because he's looking off into the corner isn't he where we're not correct so look what's wrong there was a there was a i i thought i saw a dwarf but but he looked almost like an undead uh ghoulish almost he was he was eating 
some form of what looked like stone or gold uh, feverishly. I, he's not there now. I, I'm not, this, this place may be haunted. Ah, oh, yes, this is very common. This has happened to us already once. Yes. And and at this point, I guess Silic would start to maybe feel. And again, I can't really communicate on that level with Bear, but maybe Silic is starting to feel like there's sort of suddenly triggers in Silic. <laughs> maybe there's maybe there's some connection here, right? Like mm-hmm. maybe the, is this what Bear is afraid of? Hmm. Potentially, yes. I'm imagining Silic and Bear sort of double taking. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm I'm kind of looking at Bear. Bear has not made (laughs) any. Bear himself has not made any recognition as to what or who you are talking to. Okay. And I'm going to say that I'd even. I'd even feel. I'd even feel like what did what I just saw was it even like real? Right. Like, am I? Like, if something plays a spell on us, or, I don't know, Silic is just completely confused. That, you just see Silic sort of looking back at the corner and looking back at the group and just, like, in complete confusion. Karzog does illusion magic. This could be him. He could be messing with us already. Uh, I'll slip into Arcane Sight and see if there's any remnants of, of spell in the room. Magic being cast. Hmm. Nice. Uh, would you like me to make an arcana check as well? Yes, please. Uh, 38. There it is. There's <laughs> no magic in this room. Ooh. Apart from your companions. No magic being cast it's, in this room. If it was a spell, then it disappeared before I could uh, detect it, before I could recognise it. So it's either a spell that um, maybe has been triggered by our entrance and has finished as quickly as it started, or it is a haunting. Did you recognise who you saw, uh, Solek? I don't know. Did I recognise him? No. He was a dwarf. Definitely a dwarf. Didn't recognise him. Uh, even if I could, uh, who knows? The eye sockets were gone. It, like I said, it was like a ghostly undead. I, I wouldn't know. Do we, do we have a description of the Vekas? No, you do not. Okay. We just know they're dwarves, don't we? Yeah. I and think we should be on our guard. There's. N- Nothing in any of the rooms we've been in yet, like books or pictures on the walls or anything, is there? It's all been bare, yeah. Yeah, there's there's old rotten um, work, you know, workman's gloves, big leather gloves. Yeah, but nothing um, that twine. could possibly be like these. No. Yeah. You know the the, hmm. the 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 handles on the spades are just the wood handles are just warped. The metal's still there, but. Okay. Stuff just so, survived. you said he, the the ghost was first. We'll just call it a ghost. <laughs> the ghost was first eating. You said like a stone, and then it appeared like the ghost was eating like a gold material. It looks like uh, he's eating several pebbles. So imagine he gets a bunch of d twenties and just starts <laughs> eating from his dice bag. But then it seems to be as the light starts to shine around the room from Elias. You start to see it's not pebbles; it's actually glittering. It's stuck in his beard. It's flecks of gold. He's picking up what appears to be just handfuls of small gold nuggets. He's just chomping, chomping, chomping. Interesting that he's eating. Let's, let's go over to that side of the room where you saw the apparition, uh, and we'll search there to see if we can find you know, gold on the floor or something. Go on now. Okay, do you want me to um, make a check? Yes, please. Do uh, do just do a simple perception check. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, that is a forty-one. 
Yeah, there's the the floor is empty. Okay. No pebbles, no stone, certainly no gold. I, I, but we don't think that this facility was for like extracting gold, do we? Though I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's a possibility that what they were finding here is some type of gold like yeah material but well Sin Sholas didn't we hear that it had streets of gold or something yeah I'm, I remember something like that but I'm, get, I'm getting a sense whatever they were mining you know was the death of them or, or drove them <laughs> crazy right yeah. like it, it whatever they were mining has driven them mad and it was the death of them of, of some maybe was she taking, taking a guess here maybe so if, if the if the buildings or streets were lined with gold were they take it had they not you know torn one of the it. buildings down mm -hmm. put it back here and then were separating the the non-metal material from from the gold, you know, where they're skimming the gold off the top, mm -hmm. uh, and it was the destruction of Zinchalas that sent them crazy. Well, there was something, some curse on it that did. Yeah. Gold the only other way out of this room is that door to the back wall, correct? Yeah, there's a, another door in there. Was was there any other? When I say equipment, was so th I'm still thinking this is like a, a furnace room. Is there a furnace in, in this room? No, this is... Um, I'm going to say no to a furnace. Okay, this, this, is, this more... is for smashing the bits yes. down into smaller bits to Correct. be processed elsewhere. Okay, so this is stage one. Yeah. yeah. The pulverizing room. Okay, all right. Should we move on, go to the next room? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll so, approach yeah. the door this time. I'll approach the door this time and give it a listen. Okay. Do a perception give check. Give it a wiggle. I'm sorry, what'd you say? A perception check. Thirty-seven. Okay. You hear um what appears to be No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not a 37, it's a, it's a 46. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> you still hear what appears to be um, sounds of chains. Ooh. It, it's, a metal, it's metal clink, clank noises. Almost like chains sort of, sort of like push around in the clanking wind. Clanking against one another and yeah. the wind. Think Hellraiser. They had lots of chains just hanging there. Oh, again, I'd rather think, not. Think Alien, <laughs> Alien 1. Um, I, mean, I, I was just thinking Muppets Christmas Carol. Yeah. yeah. Marley yeah. and Marley. Think, yeah. think Marley and Marley. <laughs> um, okay, well, I'll, I'll Marley and Marley. I'll slowly <laughs> open the door. Okay. Is it unlocked? Yep, yeah, it's perfectly fine. Okay, okay so, so I'll slowly, I'll slowly open the door. That's that's okay. Why do I get the impression this one's going? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like the way players always go slowly open. If I see anything, I shut the door quickly. <laughs> um, Definitely. Right. Oh no, I would oh, kick oh, it open yeah. and scream. Attack! <laughs> duvets as well. Duvets and doors are the most protective things in the world. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say duvets. <laughs> yeah, duvets. Yeah. Well, you don't um, see anything scary. The duvet goes over the head, don't it? Well, yes, you can't see it. Instantly protected from. Yeah. From it. <laughs> So the, the wooden walls of this room, um, it's a musty shaft type of room. Um, it's all natural stone at the cliff. Uh, it's all a sturdy wicking. There's, in the centre of the room, so this, as you can see it on the map, let yeah. me, uh, I'll change it for the audience, so the audience can see, where's my pen? So this is a mound of kind of just black ore in the middle. Now I don't have any stairs, but if you did see stairs, you see that this is a winding staircase that goes up and up and up and up and up. Um, but it actually looks quite sturdy. It's made of wood, but it does look quite sturdy. In the middle of this shaft, let's say where my pen is, because if I had chains, I would put them in, are several, like three or four chains, just kind of hanging and um, like jostling in the wind just above this area. Other than that, there is nothing else in the room. 
Okay, Very and those clean. chains are hanging from like the ceiling above, right? Yeah, they're, they're attached as far as you can tell. It's really dark at the top up there. Um, it goes up, I think it's about 40 foot. Um, they're thick lengths okay, of so chain. Multiple. They're just hanging down in various loops. They're swaying, clanking, just so, you know, softly. In the I'm wind, imagining. Which I'm, through. Um, I'm imagining the sound effects from Half Life Two when you get to Ravenhole. Yes. Does anyone remember that? That's yes. the I sound think. of chains sort of rustling and trees rustling and oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, are, so, are they are they looped chains? Yes. Okay. All right. So this is probably where they bring maybe buckets of. Yeah. Broken rocks in, and then climb the stairs, and then uh, yeah, pulling them up. Okay. <laughs> I'm surprised Harrison hasn't said he wants to climb the chains. <laughs> no, I will uh, just push them a bit and just kind of look yeah. at them. He dives into the sand. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there any other way out of this room, other than the stairs? No. Okay, just because on the map we can obviously all see the build. The, the yeah, the <laughs> but I think we would have tweaked that, wouldn't we? Because there should be either another door here going into a room that leads to the room with the double doors, yes. or there should be double doors in this room. Correct. Yeah, but yeah. there yes, is. The, the only thing that's here is this staircase that goes up and up and up. Now that makes me wonder what was in that room. Mm. Probably yeah. nothing. We could run out and see. Oh, maybe maybe that's the trap room. Yeah. A whole room just dedicated to traps. Yeah. Um, well, should we go around to the front and find find out, or should we just go upstairs? Um, the one time we say, no, sod it, let's just go, let's keep going, is the one time that it's the room full of magical items. <laughs> I think we should probably just continue. I've got a feeling it's not important. I'm hoping it's not important. I'm touching wood to indicate, oh, that means wood as in the material um, to indicate it's not important. Okay, and then up the stairs we go. Okay, uh, you, so you're gonna climb up the stairs to go up to, remember from outside there's a wooden building on top. Uh, and this is by a shoe, yeah. It? And this is, as you said, you're correct, Steve. So this is where they can hoist stuff to go up. They hook it on, buckets or whatever goes to the top. It's, it's very simple. Right, can everyone just quickly roll a d20 for me? <gasps> just a plain d20 with nothing attached. Yes. Six. Mar I've got Marley and Marley in my head now. Marley and Marley. <laughs> Do you know 16. They're doing it at the Albert Hall at Christmas time. They're doing the oh, orchestra they? and Muppets Christmas oh, Carol. Cool. I cool. Know, I know that. I've yeah. got a seven. Seven? I, I, okay. I, got, I got a two. Wow. Sixteen. Okay. But we'll have to wait for... Elena, what did you get? Oh, six. Six. Um, Silek, can you roll me uh, a dead flat d20, please? Dead flat. Uh, yes, I can. Good for it. Doing well on these dead flats. That's a six. You were. Um, right. Okay, everybody, we're going to have a quick break there, and then we'll come back and find out what happens to them. <laughs> right, everybody, two minutes, pee break, go grab a snack, grab a drink, and we'll come back. See in a bit. you in a bit. All right. Bye-bye. Be right back.
Okay, and we are back. Apart from Harrison, he's disappeared. But, hello! Okay, so, I've got chocolate on my instructions. There we go. Right. <laughs> it's always good. Um, what's your marching order? Who's in the lead? Who went up the stairs first? Um, based on the fact that Josh was away from keyboard when I said it, I'll, I'll take it that I went up stairs first. Okay, uh, you're first. Then, uh, uh, I guess uh, Salak would be second because we were generally all day in between taking the lead. Okay, Salak second. Where would yep. Bear be at the back? Um, or behind you? Remember, he's walking up the stairs. Well, I would. <clears throat> um, your call. I would say if Bear is still, like, is Bear still displaying the fact that he's like frightened? Uh, yes and no. It's, it's been a lot less since he's been inside. But he's not his okay. usual self. Okay. Um, then Bear would be behind me. Okay. So Bear, Bear is third. Who's behind Bear? Who wants to... Um, <laughs> I... Pick up the rear big Bear. Oh. Bear... <laughs> Backside. Who wants to go up the stairs behind Bear? No, I don't. I don't know if I should maybe do that just because I'm the only person who can probably see over him. You're the, you're the one that you can push him, but part height, really, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. so, you can. You can everyone else him. might yes, have their face in something they don't want to. Okay, Tolkis is fourth. Okay, second to last, Harrison or Yelena? I think Yelena would be last. Okay. So yeah, Harrison I'll go. Um, yeah, I'll go fifth. Right. Okay. Halfway up the stairs, Tolkus there. Um, and everyone, everyone sees these train uh, the chains which are hanging in in the middle of this thing from the ceiling. They just start to kind of rattle and, and do everything else. Tolkus and Bear both realise at the same time as you're all walking up the stairs that um, the chairs at uh, the chairs the chains <laughs> stop rattling um, Harrison I Elias Yelena and Sidek suddenly the chains like <laughs> rip up like cobras and <laughs> and they strike and they start <laughs> wrapping around your necks and start pulling you out over the drop. Oh crap! And Lovely. one by one, you get you get pulled off your feet and dragged over. You're now hanging by your neck, being choked by these chains. Bear is that everybody or just not not Was Tolkus that... and not Bear. Oh right, okay, okay. So Tolkus, um... you see everyone, just, everyone in front of you just disappear, and then as you look there, you see the people behind you have just been pulled out as well. You are fourth in position. Bear is in front of you. So that blocks Siluk and Elias. However, you can get backwards down towards Yelena and uh, Harrison. And how, how far are we hanging in the middle of this Yeah, you're, you're, you're swaying because you're kicking, you're swaying, and you're just hanging by these chains. But I mean, how far are we from? Like, let's say, how far am I from Bear? Uh, five foot. Okay. It's not. It's only it's like a ten foot shaft. Would I be able to use the verbal components of spells? Um, we don't really use that anyway. But I would say <laughs> you're choking. Mm-hmm. So if I want it's, to choke something out. It, yeah. In in eight <laughs> magic, you yeah. can use. Okay. Um, but if it is something where you, you know, if you're Doctor Stranger and you just need your hands. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you think that as you've been playing this game, you've got fireball and it happens. Well, it's one of my, it's something I use a focus point for, so it does have somatic components. But I want to kind of gas something out and then turn into an element, an air elemental okay. to get out of it. Okay. But only if that's okay. Go for it. You're, you're, you've been pulled off the stairs. You can <laughs> feel the chains getting smaller. Yeah. 
Um, I am going to try and use my great axe as a hook yep. to hook them back towards the stairs. Which one? The two that I, the two people that I can get to. Okay, I think yep. it's Yelena and Harrison. Yelena and Harrison. So, yeah. As so you I'll, reach out with the axe, Yelena disappears. Ping. All right. I, then and I'll move to thing. Harrison. Move no, to Harrison. Try and hook him with the the axe. I will the head Aaron like goes round like a hook. Gus to try and push him forwards gently, not to smash him. Okay. And get him back to the and try and try and get the chain off his neck when it, when he's back on the stairs. Okay. Um, let's do a dexterity check. So Tolkien, do a dexterity check. Harrison, these these chains. Dexterity. I don't know. It's a, do an acrobatics then. You're reaching out with your axe to Did try to hook this thing. Oh, I see what you mean. You're trying uh, to get the chain, fine. and Harrison is kicking out, and the, the chain's around his neck. You can see him start to, his eyes are bulging, he's starting to go red. I can imagine it being more of a sort of strength thing, but uh, it's up to you. Um, Yelena is there either. as a, Yelena's disappeared, but she's trying to push. It's either Harrison a 31 for acrobatics, or a 41... No, that's not right. 31, which is 10. Yeah, or a 40 okay. for athletics. Either of those succeed. So you reach out with the axe, you kind of, you, you miss a few times, you get it back, you pull the axe. With Harrison attached. Harrison's attached. Um, like I said, when I, when I get him back to where I can get hold of him, then yeah. I'll try and get the chain off his neck. Okay, so you've got him around the waist, and you put him, you put him back. That's as, that's about as much as you can do at the moment. Elias, hey. Silic. So how how what's the diameter of this? Ten foot square. Um, this ten foot. So if Shoot. I shoot, can I if can I reach? I want to reach one of the walls with my feet. No. Okay. You're only three foot. <laughs> so I'd, I'd need to be pushed closer yeah. to one of the walls. So it's right. a it's a ten foot shoot. Yeah. Then you've got at least a five foot stairwell, yeah. and that's just wood, uh, wooden stairs. And you've been. Oh, okay, picked up. so we're in the middle and the stairs yes. around the outside. Okay, you've been picked sorry. up, you're dangling, and now you're being choked. Okay, so I would like to use Mage Hand to give myself that swing um, to get to get back to the edge. Okay. And um, when my feet touch the edge, I'm going to activate my slippers of spider climbing so that I don't necessarily need to be on. The horizontal bit, I can be on the vertical bit, and then just walk up enough to take, to take some uh, tension off my neck. You know, loosen the, the the slack on the chain a little bit, and then uh, try and unravel it. Okay, so you do half of that. You manage to swing your kind of yourself out. You do your spider climb on your feet. It stops you rolling, like falling backwards anymore. Um, you're attached to the stairs. You yeah. go to kind of unravel it. It gets tighter. Silent. What do you want to do? How high off am I? How high from the ground or am I right now hanging? Um, you're at least twenty foot off the ground. You you've got about it was forty foot shoot on the stairwell, a square stairwell around the edges. You've gone up halfway, then been attacked by the chains. You're now hanging. Okay. You can see um, uh, you've seen Elias. You see Bear staring at you. You see Elias. He's kind of swung and managed to get tiptoed, and somehow he's sticking to the stairs. And you can hear stuff going on behind you further down, but it's out of your field of view. And the chains are starting to tighten. Okay. Well, I'll try to, I'll try to, like, as I'm... Bear! Bear! And if Bear is only five feet away, he's got ten foot. Maybe Bear can kind of sort of lift out his paw and yeah. sort of maybe take off some of the weight from me hanging. So Bear reaches out, but as he can't grab you, he's, like, pushing you. So boom, and then you're swinging, and boom, and then you're swinging. He's got no way of actually grabbing you properly. Okay, and as I'm swinging, I can't come back and try to like hook my legs or something around his paw that's stuck out. Do a try. Do a. Let's do a reflex check. Okay. Ooh, it's my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> Specialty. 46. Okay. Nice. You manage to, to hook, hook your legs, your feet, you grab them with your feet, like with your, as if you're climbing a rope, 
you grab hold of his his front arm and he kind of puts his arm back and he's pulling you um, unfortunately you can't kind of hit the bottom you can't get your feet back on the stairs and this chain is getting tighter and tighter so Tolkus what are you going to do with Harrison um, it, it, can I attempt to loosen the chain go ahead I will try uh, what do I need um, athletics check do, do a strength check yeah. You try to undo it, and it starts to get tighter. Right, I've rolled a 10. Um, so if we're using strength, that'll be athletics, which is plus 30, so it's 40. Okay, so you, you start to feel the resistance, and it starts to slip through your hand. And you can, you can physically see it. It shouldn't be doing this. It's like a snake. It's starting to constrict around Harrison's neck. And then you get a better grip and you start to tense and pull back and slowly you see this chain. It's a lot. I mean, this, this should not have this kind of power and you start to unravel it from across his neck. You get a, <sighs> one hook comes off of his head and then you kind of wrap it around your arm and then two hooks. And then Harrison's just now hanging onto this, onto this chain. Cool. Yelena, what are you doing? Um, in terms of where the chains are hanging, are they? Are we like in the middle, if that makes sense? Yeah. Or are we near the top of the chains? You're in the middle. It's a okay. shoot. You're in the middle of the shoot. Can I fly up to see where the chains start? Yeah. So, you go up. <laughs> I've got eighty foot movement. That's fine. Nice. Um, it's it's a it's a wooden room. Mm -hmm. Um. You can see the chains are all attached to a beam. There's there's no one else up there. You can um, see the pulleys and stuff okay. in, in, the, in the ceiling. Okay, I would like to make an attack on the beam to try and okay. loosen them. Um, so that's not an awful lot of bludgeoning damage. Um, I roll a 16. Uh, what do I add? What do I add? Uh, 16 plus 25. Will that hit? Yes. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a stationary beam of wood. <laughs> I thought I'd just double check. You, you never can know. hit it with anything except a one. <laughs> okay. I'll even give you a bonus on a one. Okay. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. So that is a four plus. 11 is 15 points of damage okay. oh no sorry double the damage dice let me do another one another three so 18 points of damage okay and what how exactly are you attacking this beam um it is um it's a gust uh a gust so i guess i'm going i'm going up at 80 foot around um 80 foot movement so i'm just hitting it as hard as i can as i go to try and release them. With a gust of wind. With a gust of wind. Or she a blows. beam in a in a building. A beam in a building. Holding and... several people below by their necks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um you go She's and... panicking slightly. She doesn't want to lose anyone else. Yeah. Okay, also... you, you 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 fluff. <laughs> fluff. Uh... Fluff. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> Sadly, no effect. Yeah, I tried. Um, I can't really do anything else. There's a, there's a platform up there. If you want to, you know, okay, turn back into Elena. There's a there's a platform. There's a landing at the top of the stairs. You can go there. Nothing could possibly happen. I will do that. Okay, so you land on top of the on on top of the landing. Um, we'll come back to you in a sec. Yeah. <laughs> um, Elias, you're stuck to the stairs. Uh, your tippy toes. Right. So, seeing as the the fact that this didn't loosen when I when I walked up, it's obviously attacking with intent. I will slip into arcane sight uh, so I can see whether it's magical or not. To see whether this is the effect of a spell. So, is is the chain magical? And can I see the beam up above? Is that also magical? You you can see the beam up above. Um, the chain is not magical. It's not magical. Is the beam above magical? No. 
so there's no magical effect ongoing at the moment. Just your companions. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try something. Um, I would like to use my reaction mm. to uh, try and disappear um, using my because I can't remember what bloody thing's called. <sighs> Sorry, my brain's just gone. <laughs> Unexpected shift. Okay. So I'd like to try and shift that, try and disappear, uh, and see if that would release me from. Um, is it is this invisibility or is this disappearing and reappearing somewhere else? This is. This is disappearing and reappearing. So what I normally use it for is if, if I say I get hit, for example, uh, as a reaction, I can use this ability to disappear from reality and it would reduce the damage. What I'm trying to do is disappear from reality, expecting the things to constrict beyond where my neck is and then reappear and it's not attacking me anymore. Okay. So that, you, That's my intent. The instant you disappear... Oh, I have to roll for it because it's not it's, it's like a, a chance thing so right. I need to roll a d20 it may not happen uh, I, I rolled high enough for it to happen so I, I, I was just imagining you trying to be Drax if I move incredibly slowly <laughs> no one can see me and I am disappeared yeah. <laughs> no. he's like no if I just it's, stay here <laughs> it's, 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 it's not a yeah it's not it's not an invisibility thing it's like a, a shift out of reality and then and then reappear back on the planet I am moving incredibly slowly um, right okay so you, you disappear immediately as you disappear um, the chains just turn into a chain they, they relax what they were doing So then I reappear, still attached to the wall, and the chain no longer around my neck. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I guess that's that would be my go because I did detect magic, and and then that with my reaction. Okay. You can also see now you've you've done that, although you're kind of perpendicular to the the shaft. Yep. Um, you can see Silek, his legs are wrapped round Bear's paw that's still kind of out. He, Bear is trying to bring his paw back. Um, Unfortunately, it means he's, he's kind of choking Psylocke even more in the no. process, but Psylocke is keeping hold with his legs. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just shout to anyone that, that can hear, uh, Psylocke's in trouble. He, he can't get a grip on the side and he seems to be choking himself out even more. Um, and that's it. Unless you can say I can move to help. No, I think you've done your your actions at that point. Um, Silent, can you roll a one d six for me, please? A one. <laughs> no, no, no it, it, it's fine. It's fine. It's not a, it's it's damage. Not a, it's not a table roll. It's damage. So you, okay. One oh, point of damage, point. but you start <laughs> realizing that this is the point where it's got so tight you now can't take in any air. So before you were gasping, and now you're... Okay. You've only got the air that's in your body left. It, has it, um, has it helped? With, like, is there any, has there been any relief of, of me, like, holding on to bear or you know taking weight off or is that not making a difference at all no it's it, you haven't taken the weight off what you've done is um you've got a secure you've got an anchor so you're not kind of wildly swaying anymore you've got an anchor now but these chains are tightening which means if they're tightening they're slowly pulling you away from bear Okay. Yelena, um, Tolkis, and Harrison, you can see this because you're further down. You can see Sila struggling. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as I can, I'm going to move up to try and help Sila as much as I can. Bear is pretty much blocking access. Can I climb over him? 
You can, yeah, you can, uh, you can do that. If yeah. he if he doesn't go mad, I don't think he will because <laughs> he'll be concentrating on Silek. Yeah. So if I start to scurry over the top of him, it probably won't set him off. But um, uh, that's up to you, I guess. No, you can do it. Go. Yeah, I'll I'll climb over him then. Um, and when I get to the other side, I'll try and grab Silek and do the same thing that I did with Harrison. Yeah. Okay, so you reach out with the axe, try and bring him back. Yeah, hook him in. Yeah, do a roll for me. Uh, we did. Yelena Harrison, what are you doing? So I'm I'm released now. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um. I'm going to see if I can kind of try and lift uh, Silek up. 39. Silex. You're completely out of reach, Harrison. <coughs> okay. You've got berries in your way. Tolkus is now trying to, to reach over. Because you got all you're going to do is Silek's feet are wrapped around Bear's arm. Tolkus has gone over Bear to get higher so that the axe will be above Silek's head, if you like, to try to get a fresh bit of chain and try and bring him in. Yeah, 39 Dave for that one. Okay, yeah, you reach, you, you know what you're doing this time. You've got, you know, you did it before. Practiced. Practiced. You start to peel, peel, pull him back in um, as much as you can. You kind of reach out one arm as well, try and get his hand. Um, I assume I probably wouldn't be able to do all that though and remove the chain from his neck. No. Right. Again, so you've, he's got a firmer anchor. You can see he's, he's not breathing anymore. Mm-hmm. So all I can do for now, Silex, sorry. Okay, Elias, you Don't know. worry, friend. We will get it off you. <laughs> In the next turn. <laughs> yeah. Six seconds time. Elias, Elena, what do you want to do? Um, I want to look around upstairs. Okay. What can I see? Um, upstairs, I will show you. Oh, no. We are. Roll for initiative. Jump down the hole wait, again. Wait for me. <laughs> so let's say you are here. Let me get this so everyone can see. Here we go. So this is the shaft going down, um, and the oh, where's my pen? And the chains are going up the top of this area. You are on the landing at the top of the stairs. You can see the landing goes round in a kind of a, just basically a square shape. And there is a single door. Okay. I would just like to walk around the landing and see what I can see. Okay. You yeah. are, you are perfectly uh, safe and sound. It's dark up there. It's dingy, it's dirty, but other than that, you're fine. Um, there are no open windows. In this dark plummeting shaft, there is a heavy winch bolted to the balcony, uh, balcony supports a rusty chain that runs up through the pulley mounted on the roof of the shaft and from which hangs various heavy iron buckets and the chains and things. Uh, heavy, heavy wooden chocks have been nailed to the floor at the edge of the balcony and the front wheel of a wheelbarrow rests against them. Do I think I can lower the chains? Yes. Can I try and lower the chains? Yes. Way to roll. Um, you reach down to lower it. It's basically turning the wheel, turns this whole okay. kind of pulley system to release yeah. them. Do you want mm -hmm. to turn it left or do you want to turn it right? Why do you ask me these questions? <laughs> As a human being, I can never remember. <laughs> As a human being, I can never remember which way tightens things and which way to loosen things. This is why I asked them. <laughs> I can tell you the rhyme that helps you remember it's if you lighty, like. Tighty tighty lefty loosey, isn't it? That's it. Yeah. Still left then. I don't know okay, why so loosey is you lefty. You grab the wheel, you turn but... left. As soon as you try, it's it's not moving. Do a strength check for me. <clears throat> oh god, that's awful. I rolled a three. Oh. Um, it's not gonna do anything, is it? Strength. Yeah. Um, yeah, athletics. Yeah, athletics. Would be. Uh, Twenty-three. Well, good. Um, it's 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 okay. You you start to do it. It slowly starts to turn. You can feel. Um, obviously this is old. Okay, this mm -hmm. is hasn't been used in a number of years. 
and you can almost feel the grinding of rust, metal on metal, yeah. as you do it. But it is not enough to loosen uh, the chains on this guy. Right. What do people want to do? Sarlacc is dying. <laughs> well, as soon as it's my go again, I'll, I'll do, be. We're just going to... around. So, you so... know, Togras was there. Harrison, you're at the <laughs> you're at the back end of Bear. Elias, <laughs> you're perpendicular. So I got a I got a question. Would okay. Silic between all of this? Would Silic know that the results of checking for like magic or spells? Like I know he's sitting there suffocating, but like he's still aware of his surroundings. Would he know that the results of these things were like, no, there's no magic here? Um, I I I don't know. I think the the fact that you saw a ghost earlier, and no one else did, but this is something real. This is tangible. This is happening. This has happened to them as well. Uh, would you imagine it was as you're being choked to death that oh, this is magic? I don't know. <laughs> Just trying to remember your safe word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, as the group continues to... Because there's not really much that I can do. So, as, as well, the group continues... Well, you can. Continue, you just... You've got to work with what you've got. Which, at the yeah. moment, is not much. You have one lung yeah. full of oxygen. And they, um, you can see these people trying to save you. Yeah, don't, don't forget that you're now stable... So you yeah. don't have to worry about, um, you know, like you were holding on to Bear's arm with your legs before, weren't you? Yeah. Tolkien so has you in his almost warm yeah, embrace. In theory, you you could now try and pull off the chains before I even get a chance, in theory, I'm guessing, because he can concentrate on doing that himself, can't he? Yeah. Yeah. Well, could I use both Could I use both hands? Would Bear be able to still be able to hold me? No, I'm um, holding you now. I've got you. Tolkus has got you, and and you had your legs wrapped around Bear's arm. Oh, okay. All right. All so right. I you were, you were always like okay. this, pretty much. Okay. So then, yeah, that's absolutely what I'll do if that's the case. If okay. if if they're holding me and I can take both, you know, I can I can use both of my hands. Yep. Then I'll reach up and grab. I'll reach up and grab the chain and try to start like, you unwind know, moving it, it around yep. like my neck to kind of try to like unwind it. Do a strap check for me, please. please. Uh, just straight strength plus the yep. modifier, or no? It'd be athletics again. Do an athletics. Oh, athletics. Thirty-four. Okay, so as you do that, you you uh, you do the Solid. first loop, um, and you start. <gasps> you take a breath. You do the second loop, and then suddenly, you you the gravity gets you as you come undone from uh, the weight around your neck. From coming undone, but luckily, Tolkus kind of swings you down and puts you back onto the stairs. Oh, <coughs> oh, Tolkus, uh, th th thank you. Uh, are you okay, my friend? I for a moment there, I wasn't sure if that was real or not but uh oh, it sure sure as hell felt real we all saw it it, uh, it happened to multiple people yes this was real I'll just continue to kind of cough and kind of <laughs> bent over almost <laughs> can you take a moment to catch your breath you see and everyone who looks at you even even under the beard you're you know you're sore your skin is just sore you've got all these red marks around it Okay. That that happened. That wasn't the ghost. And there was no magic. The chains are now uh, just swinging. They're not going after you, they're not attacking, they're just back to being hanging chains. Literally. I have uh, I have no idea what that was. I'm expecting a, a doll on a bike to come round the corner. Oh god. god. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, I mean I guess the strange thing is like these are standard, Would I guess, you like standard to play a game? <laughs> chains, right? Like standard chains can't just take off with themselves, right? They got to be animated, or they got to be, they got to have some type of spell magic. So if there is no magic in this area, then could we basically be in this like a haunted house? And that's why I'm. I guess Silex still questioning, like, is this actually real? Like, is this really happening? Yeah, because do ghosts actually, sh they don't show up as magic, I'm assuming. 
rightly or wrongly. Well, I, I have no idea. Hmm. I've not experienced ghosts in my lifetime. Yes, you have. <laughs> have I? Yeah, <laughs> inside Foxglove Manor. In your house. <laughs> it yeah. was your family. In your house. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, was quite, that was quite traumatic. He's probably blocked it out. Yeah, yeah that, that's what it is. I'll it put it to that. Um, Josh hasn't uh, experienced ghosts. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about yourself in the third person or just look quiet? <laughs> yeah. You ain't Terry Crows, mate. Don't worry. Talking about myself, yeah. But uh, I, I, I definitely forgot about the ghosts in uh, Fox Club Manor as well. So, uh, yeah. But maybe yes, maybe this is the same kind of, you know, haunted spirits or you know, stuff going on. See, I can't recall from that whether whether we actually detected them as magic or not. We we didn't have that sort of stuff back then, did we? Yeah, we did, and I can't remember either. So no, because I thought it was the the only thing we found that was out of the ordinary was the fungus or mushrooms or whatever they were. Yeah, well, that, that sent Rupp uh, slightly mad. Hmm. Well, I hope that, yeah, I, I really can't remember whether we... Like, the things we were seeing, like the woman dancing in the piano and things, mm. I, I really can't remember if they detected the magic or not. No, I never can. I say we move as far as ways we can from the chains. Um, yeah. yeah. Also, where is, to, where is Yelena? Uh, did you She's see where stairs. Yelena went? Yeah, Yelena's oh. at the top of the stairs. <laughs> Yelena, are you up there? Yeah. You can oh. be just gradually seeing the chains coming down. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't know what's going on. If you want to do another roll, we'll see if you succeed. <laughs> yeah. Why Yelena not? was controlling them the whole time. Uh, no, that was yeah. 25, so it's not really much better. Okay. It's Yelena, get her. <laughs> so as, as, as you do so Yelena as you do that the 25 succeeds so on the second okay. attempt you, everyone on the stairs further down you hear Yelena go Aah! as she oh, finally God. goes the chains go <laughs> flinging themselves down to the ground huge <laughs> clatter noises as these chains just reverberate up the chute and chamber Yelena as you do that as you release the chains yeah through the house, there's a huge like gust of wind, and the door near you flies open. Bang, 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 and then slowly okay. falls shut again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this is a good old-fashioned haunting. <laughs> yeah, or it's something like Monster House, where the house is actually alive. I, I, I'll tell you afterwards what I was thinking. There's a child in the corner. Yeah. Thinking death house at the end. Yeah, we got to be careful. All right, so Bear and Silek will, you know, he's smacked Bear like on the ass, like hightail it up the, yeah. hightail it up the stairs. If and, you go in this room, you see a you see a black and white TV with a well. Just just, <laughs> just, just run away. <laughs> Where's Derek Akora when you need him? Yeah, in jail hopefully. He Never passed mind. away. I he's, thought he's a ghost he was going to say that. Well, he's probably haunting a house then. Someone will do a program on it, won't they? <laughs> yeah, to say, I told you so. Right, so you all, you all rush up the stairs to see Elena? Yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 okay. we're getting out of that chain area. Okay. Yeah, I think. Hightail it upstairs to where Elena is. You all will hightail it upstairs. We'll use it your laner now. You can see it on the map. There is the door that was banging away. Um, that's where the wheel was behind this kind of wall. Uh, your laner can't see this because she's not plugged into the uh, unless she's watching on Twitch. But I am you watching have, on Twitch. There you go. You have this kind of area, that space. Thanks. Oh, there you go. Full of viewers. So you can see Area. This. So this door is the one that just smashed open with the wind and a gust of wind went all the way past you it felt like um, almost as if it went around you okay and well, so the it circled me yeah okay so i released the chains there was some kind of wind 
open the door, slowly close the door. There's something funky about this place. I don't like it. I agree. So I look at you, all right. Do you need any healing? Um, I'm, I, I'm all right. I uh, didn't really take much damage. It was more, uh, more just a little bit scary. Mm, yeah. Not one to uh, not be able to breathe, if you know what I mean. No, <laughs> so uh, I'm, uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Should we check out the door which opens itself? Yeah, listen at the door. Okay, Tolkis is listening at the door. To yeah, I can listen. Perception, perception. Harrison gives uh, Silak a, a pat on the back and says, well, I feel "38." You. Okay, you hear nothing. You do, you you Uh-oh. actually hear more sounds of the wind going through the, the, the creeks and the cracks of the planks mm. of wood. So I hear nothing. You hear something. I hear nothing but creaking. Should we try it? Yeah. Well, so that'll go back down where the chains are. Is it uh, yeah. locked at all? Well, we know it's not locked because it flew open, didn't it? Duh. Yeah. Well, uh, well, unless it locked itself. Mm, yeah. Could I'll be. try try the handle. Here's the, Johnny. The door. <laughs> Here's Jack. Yeah, the door opens. Push it open slowly. Okay, okay. Because so you love the slow pushing of doors. Yeah. The door opens perfectly fine. And you appear to be standing in uh, an adjoining corridor to a much larger room. So the, you've got the corridor here. We've got some doors. There's a door here. Sorry, I will change this for the audience. Any audience can see? Right, so you've got a door here, door here, door here. You've got a corridor here into a much larger room. Door here. There's a window. And there's another door. There's that. a window. <laughs> and that's. Right, one second. Should we uh, should we go in that room to the right then? Well, it, yeah. it, the um, the whole the whole place. You as you without going through any doors, if you just kind of explore this whole area, yeah. For example, what we can do, we put everyone in, and then you can decide which doors you want to open. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, well. Um, so, like, you're all spread out because it's a much it's a much bigger space. This is basically the the living area of this structure. So this room has obviously doubled as the main living quarters and kitchen for the inhabitants of the cabin. There is a stone hearth and a chimney, uh, which occupies the southeast corner. There is an, with an iron hook holding a cauldron above the grate. The rest of the room is in horrific state. There's firewood cooking utensils, pots and pans, even furniture that just lies and in heaps around the floor, all scattered in, in heaps. There's a painting of two dour-looking dwarves standing in front of an enormous elk hangs askew on the northern wall. I don't have a mini for that, otherwise I would have put it in. Um, there are what appears to be very old, the text says ancient, but very old, bloodstains mar the walls and the floor all the bits of oton furniture seem to be splattered with blood old blood faded blood but no bodies okay. so in in the picture the two dower dwarves that stood between uh, stood on either side of an elk a large elk i i pull that down from the wall take avid silic and say so, like, these two dwarves here, was either of those one of the, the, the dwarf that you saw eating the rocks or eating the gold uh, from the room downstairs? I'll take it and look at it. Well, um, it's, it's, it's hard to say. Um, yes, it is. That one. So I'll just kind of, I'll, 
So I do know one of them. Yep. So one of them is uh, the picture is actually labelled um, uh, Silas and Karivek Vecker. One of them has this big kind of white Father Christmas beard, but you know much down to his belly. And the other one has brown hair, uh, brown beard, brown hair, and these two kind of I was going to say ponytails, but these two kind of beard things with these gold clasps on either end. That's the one you saw. And that's the Silas. That that was Silas, said? yeah. Okay. Well, it looks like uh Yes. This one here, Silas. Uh looks very similar to uh the dwarf I saw downstairs. Yes, I, I do I do believe so. So So whatever they was doing at the city if indeed they they did find Jin Slash could have been what caused the curse, if that's what it is. This place seems cursed, uh, or haunted. Either by them or some other spirit that they released where you know, if they did destroy some of the buildings in Jin Slash, we we don't know. Uh, I suggest we search this area for more information. Uh, maybe there's some clues as to how we can get to the city ourselves. So, we've got uh, Elias and Silo, and Bear is nearby. Everyone else was just kind of milling around over here, because you two were looking at the pitch and passing it around to each other. Yeah. As you're talking, and as you're looking at this portrait, you both hear each other's bellies rumble. Okay. Is me and Elias' bellies mm -hmm. rumble? Like out of hunger? Like a hunger rumble? Yep. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, uh, pardon me. Uh, I guess I'm a little bit more hungry than I thought it was. That shouldn't happen to me. Mm. I'm mm. Uh, magically resistant to needing food. Yeah, well, you're a uh... Your tum tum would say different, friend. Indeed, there's definitely something going on here. As you turn around, you see sort of bear sniffing and sniffing at the sort of debris and furniture at the at the old blood, and both of you start to salivate. What cheese is it? Debris. Sorry, no. Oh uh, my back. god! <laughs> wow, they're so bad. We even have to yeah. think about them now. <laughs> yeah, they're not even obvious. But it, hit, it, 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 it hits so hard when it all makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know about you, Elias, but um, well, I'm uh, I am getting really hungry. Trying to see some more. That. Uh... Smell of iron in the air. It's, uh, it's got a certain attraction to it. Mm, it does. Should we, uh, should we investigate some more? Oh, I'll head over to the bloodstains. Okay. Uh, they are, yeah, bloodstains. Very, very old. Very, very faded. As you start to, the more you pay attention to them, you look around and you can see the pattern of the blood. I mean, this this was carnage. Whatever happened here was a nightmare to someone. Could I, could I make a, uh, a medicine check mm -hmm. to see if I think this is the blood of one person or more than one person? Go for it. Uh, that's an 18 on the dice. Uh, so that's a 39 in total. Okay. Um, I'm going to say you're going to take an educated guess and say it is more than one person. However, this is... This is still a lot of blood. And you know bodies contain a lot of blood, especially when liquid is out on a flat surface. It can spread quite far and wide. And if you was to like take a cup of blood and just splatter it. It would look a lot more than just a pint of blood. Yeah. yeah. 
But you have a nasty, nagging suspicion that this is more than one person. I I think this 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 could be the uh, the end point of uh, Silas and his brother's journey. Whatever happened here was um, horrible. You think they died right here? Yeah. This is this is maybe I'm I'm guessing, but this is maybe more than the blood of of one. It's maybe the blood of two. Is there any signs of like struggle, or is it just? Um, it's hard like, is to the tell. Blood smeared I mean, in a way where it looks like the blood isn't smeared. I mean, the blood on the floor is definitely pools of blood, or at least old pools of blood. And you can see on the walls and on the furniture. And remember, the furniture is, is overturned and everything else, and just dilapidated. But there are. It's not just, like I was saying about if you were to toss a cup of blood at the wall. This isn't drops of blood. It's this spray. is spray okay multiple directions multiple areas and if you think okay if there was one person attacking another person in the middle of this room you'd have spray arterial spray goes in one direction you'd have to spin this body around your head to spray all these walls <laughs> so that's why Elias is thinking this is multiple people maybe this is this is two people fighting each other the spray isn't all in one direction this is not like the two people that were eviscerated facing against something else because then all the spray would be in one direction. The spray is everywhere. This is two people met their end here, probably by each other's hands. So I like we'll just kind of keep looking around all the walls. Yeah, you're, uh, you're definitely right. This was one hell of a fight. But where are the bodies? Yelena Tokas Harrison, what would you like to do? Um, I should be looking around other parts of the room. So it seems that um, Elias and Silas are deep in discussion. So I'll go to the other corner and see what's there. Okay. If anything. In where abouts in the room in the in the same area in the room where where they are or where your mi miniature was, um, um, so you're kind of in the corridor still. You've got three doors near you. If you go into okay. the main room, you see as you said. So Silek and Elias are having a deep chat over a portrait and investigating mm -hmm. uh, old bloodstains. There yeah. is a door here uh, to the left go, of the room. I will go for that door. Okay, so you're going to go into the room, pass bear, up to the yep. next door. I'll yep. follow you, Lena. <laughs> Probably wise. Okay, so you're both going in? Yeah, I would like to listen at the door first, please. Go ahead, perception <laughs> check. <laughs> I'm going to keep my eyes on Elias and um, Silac. 30. Right, so we'll move you up and... Because we hungry. <laughs> I'm just curious Harrison what's is, going on. Harrison is getting ready to kill you. <laughs> that was a 30. Uh, no, you don't hear anything. Cool, I will open the door. Apart from the usual creaks and cracks. And yeah. Creaking and cracking and cracking and creaking. Are we going in, Yelena? Yeah. Okay, so you, you open the door. It's a bit, it's a bit stiff, this door. Um, but it, it all seems okay. It's um, mm -hmm. it's a it's a bare floored room. It has okay. a series of iron hooks suspended from the rafters. I've we... seen this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sweet, sweet mm. baby. Um, That's the... And Maybe see, not step inside the room. Yeah, suspended and, from the rafters. How? Well, you're kind of already in. It's not like you open a door. You kind of open the door and step in. Uh, I tend to look inside rooms before <laughs> I go in. <laughs> <laughs> in real the, life. The, <laughs> the wall looks over the edge. Um, so let me re let me reply. The window in the far wall 
looks over the far edge so, of the cliff, okay, and the cabin below. So you can see mm -hmm. it, it goes right straight from down, just disappears into darkness and cloud. Um, it also has no glass or shutters in this window. Okay, so, so all, that's quite chilly. This is where all the the gusts of wind are definitely coming from. Uh, okay. But there is, there's a tight lattice of iron bars. So you can't mm -hmm. jump out. Nothing can jump through. Um, against the far wall sits a four foot tall over here somewhere uh, mm -hmm. mound of bones. And That's a lot of bones. By the size of them, they will look about Dwarven bones. Okay. I'm going to shout out. I think we might have found the brothers in the creepy room with the hooks in the ceiling. Nothing can possibly go wrong. Definitely. Tolkas is like standing there with his axe ready to bat them away <laughs> if they come if they come down. Elena will approach the pile of bones. Okay, so you move going over... around the outside of the edge of the room. That's fine. That's fine. Um, okay. Do I so... initiative now? No, not yet. You you. <laughs> okay, so you, you kind of kneel down to to look at these bones. You you rummage through, and then you notice one of the bones, mm -hmm. and it appears to be. It's not the bone you recognise, it's the jewellery on the bone. Right. Um, it could be a ring on a finger, or it could be a necklace that just happens to be sort of draped over a rib cage or something like that. Whatever mm -hmm. it is, in your mind's eye, whatever it is. Um, or it could be an item of clothing, like a belt, but you know, still wrapped around the bones. However you recognise it, it's a piece of your jewellery. Right. Um, if I look down, it's actually it's a ring. If I look down, is that ring on my finger? It's exactly so, the it, same it, ring. Right. Is that the only thing there, or is there anything else I might recognise, or I might see, not necessarily recognise? Is there yeah, any other jewelry? Right. You, or... you, you realise you, you realise that that's the, you know you, it's it's a ring on your finger. And then you're realising that's exactly the same ring that I've got. Huh. And then oh, as you start starting to look around, that is another piece of jewellery. That is uh, an item of your clothing. It would be like a, not a leather belt, but it'd be the buckle of the belt. Yeah. And you realise more and more that is what you're seeing. Uh... Elena just gets up and backs away wordlessly, and she's kind of gone pale. So as you uh, look around mm -hmm. to Tolkus, who's been guarding the room, looking around, yeah. suddenly from behind Tolkus, you see the shadows move and burst, and it's like a dozen figures, these black shadows, mm -hmm. um, as ghosts start whirling around you and then they get closer and then they get closer and then you realize they are starting to claw at your skin you see bits of your flesh start to tear and then you see their teeth as they start to bite chunks out of you all over your body okay do i oh. see anything though no you you notice yelena Look at his bones. She's doing this. <laughs> yeah, she's, and then as she turns around to you, you can see the blood drain out of her. And then as she turns to you, you just see her eyes go wide. Uh, you don't see anything else. Yeah. And then but... she's fighting off and, yeah, just going crazy. Can I go grab her and say, "Come to your senses, woman." <laughs> <laughs> is that what you do? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I grab, I grab her by the shoulders and say, Yelena, what's wrong? Yelena. Uh, Yelena, can you roll two d six, please? I can. 
four in total. Oh, okay. Uh, you take 11 points of damage. That's not what I rolled. It's psychic damage. It is. Are they still attacking me? Uh, as Tolkus grabs you, uh -huh. they disappear. Right. Okay. Can I go back to the bones? Yep. I'm, I'm still not saying anything. I'm still pale. Yep. Uh, can I still see jewellery? Or has that disappeared? It's all gone. Right. Mm. Cool. What, what happened, Yelena? Oh, uh, The bones. They were wearing my jewellery and my clothes. And then when I moved away, I was attacked. Did you just not see anything? I just saw you flailing around, like as if something was attacking you. But I could not see anything. So there was loads of them. They're like, I don't know, four or five. They just came for me. They were tearing at me. I think this is something like what Silex saw with the uh, dwarf. Maybe because I didn't see anything. I think we should go to the others now, quick. Yeah, I think we should stick together. <laughs> Because separating in spooky houses is always a good idea. <laughs> it's, it's the perfect idea. Nothing it's cabin in the woods. Go wrong. Yeah. We'll rejoin everyone else. Okay. This is why I like having having a map and then the minis and then you can go off and do your own kind of things. It's the only way to kind of successfully split the party. <laughs> <laughs> what have you guys found? What's What's with the painting? Well, it's, um... as Yelena s speaks to you, oh. those hunger pains disappear. Ooh. Interesting. Right, silent. Well, um, um, I, I, I was I was pretty hungry before, but uh, I, I don't know. I feel I I feel good now. Elias, uh, how are you feeling? Back to normal. Um, this haunting is... Well, it's obviously going beyond just seeing apparitions. Been attacked by the chains. I felt it intensely hungry, which is um, not normal. There's some bones in there. I saw my own jewellery on that one them. And then I was attached by shadows. There's something weird here. Yeah. This place is definitely haunted. As we... you say that, another gust of wind <laughs> comes through. You hear various doors. Bah, 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 bah. That happens. Haunted! Yelena's is going to say really loud to see what happens. <laughs> Unfortunately, our. Um... Our expert on, uh, I guess, the undead. If that's what these are, or religion is, is not here currently. Mm. So I don't know what we're supposed to do about exercising the apparitions. Out of curiosity, Harrison will kind of uh, say, because he, he's seen the, the the conversation and about Silas, right? And he's he's overheard them talking about Silas. Did they actually encounter bones, or is it just them kind of just seeing the bones? Did I see the bones as well? If you go in the room, yeah, you you see a pile of bones. Yeah, so um, I'll make a sort of a just a connection and just sort of go. Well, I suppose you know, maybe there's a way that we can communicate with if whatever's in here. Maybe it's sort of something or someone uh, that needs to be put to rest. Maybe we need to speak to them and 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 maybe set them free so I, I uh, Harrison will say Silas if you're in here with us make a sound as Harrison says that the GM gives him a PP <laughs> coin yeah. you go. oh hang on oh, I don't know where my PP coin is it's disappeared it's there in front right of here. you okay well I don't know where my actual <laughs> it's through the screen you grab it I've got it I've got a fake one 
<laughs> Why are the PP coins disappeared? You're ruining the magic. You're breaking, <laughs> you're breaking the magic. I don't know what happened yeah. to my PP coin. It's gone. Well, I, I, well, I, I gave it to you, and now it's disappeared. Try, yeah. try again. Here we go. I found it now. Right. There we go. What do you mean yeah. you found it? I've got another one. Breaking the magic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a great visual transition. Yeah, it does. Oh, it oh, appeared oh, on my oh, desk. Oh. That's what happened. You see it. Right. Okay. Well, there we go. Back, back to. Okay. So as you say that. You hear, um, like, bum, 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 through the whole house. Well, that worked, and I didn't expect it to. Mm. I, I was going to troll him and cast ghost down. <laughs> 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 and I'll, I'll, I'll say, well, I suppose maybe that is Silas. I don't, I don't know. I've never met Silas, but... Is there a way that you can communicate with him, Siluk, um, since you, you know him? Well, I don't... He doesn't I've know just him. seen him before, right? I oh, okay. No, he he is, he's, he's, Harrison, it's just several, the dwarfs. It's been several hundred years. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a few hundred years. You probably you know of the Vecca brothers, because they're... Yeah, that's a... They're looked down on. Dwarves keep their word. These dwarves did not keep their word to their backers. You might have uh, a connection. What with was the silent. reason for that? They were dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, do you, <clears throat> do you, do you want Silic to try to call out for Silas as well? If you See if we want can make Silic some contact. to do that, you, yeah, that's your decision. Yeah. So. Sure. Um, well, uh, Harrison, uh, I don't really want to admit this, but I'm um, not a big, uh, not a big fan of ghosts. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to see what I can do. Um, so I'll, I'll walk towards the door and kind of shout because the bones are in the other room. So I'll walk towards the door. I assume that the door is still open. Yep. And I'll shout. I won't go inside. I will. I will literally shout through the through the the, the opening of the door into the room. Uh, Silas, uh, are you here? It's me, <laughs> Silic. As as you say that, you you all kind of wait. One second. Two seconds. Well, I guess seconds. there's nothing. And then, boom, 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 boom. Oh! the whole house, <laughs> like, boom, 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 starts to almost shake with these banging and uh, knocking. You all, out the corner of your eyes, no matter where you are in this room, out the corner of your eyes, you suddenly see movement, and it's like you ju- you thought you just saw a dwarf move, like run. If a dwarf could mm. skitter and run into the shadows. You just saw, all of you saw that. Can you all uh, make a fortitude saving throw for me, please? Oh, I should. Fortitude. A 30 for Harrison. Why do I keep rolling sixes? Uh, 29. Okay. That's a, uh, a 40 for me. Okay. And a fortitude save equals a critical success, or success is the same thing as a critical success, if that makes any difference. That's fine. 38 for me. 32. Okay, Yelena. Yeah. You see this dwarf kind of skitter off. And suddenly, it's like... It's like... You are starving inside. You grab your belly and mm-hmm. like double over. Like, ah, ah. You are, you've got severe hunger pains. You are... You, you see your, the skin on your bones just grow taut. Mm. And it's almost as you grab your belly, it, it's like it gets sucked in even more. It just starts mm-hmm. to... Yeah. Get up. Um, Can you take 
Uh, roll for me 4d6. Four? <laughs> yes, please. Bloody hell. I do not like this. It's a double last time. Well, that's a good roll, unfortunately. 12. Okay, you take 12 points of damage. Okay. <clears throat> and can you also roll a 1d4 for me, please? Um, Should I help Big Tough Pete? Three. Three. Can you reduce your constitution by three, please? Oh, really rather not, please. No, I'd no. really rather not. Uh, we need a cleric with restoration. Everyone I else, you see Elena double over, and she's just <clears throat> screaming in pain and crashing down onto the floor. I'll try and catch her before she crashes down. Okay. Do a reflex if you want. Reflex. Do, 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 do. Uh, reflex. Bop, 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 bop. Not too bad, my reflex. Uh, it's 11 plus 26. Yep. You see Elena just 37. scream double over in pain and just topple over forward and you you just you just act. You don't even think, you just act and grab her just before she gets the floor. <laughs> nice one, Sherry. <laughs> Old school stuff. <laughs> Okay, Silek's gonna. As I'm seeing this, Silek will kind of yell into the shadows where he saw the dwarf scurry through. S Silence, please. We're not. We don't come in harm. Please stop. You're hurting her. You hear back. Uh, not so much coming from the room, that where the bones are. Just, just all around on the air, traveling around. You just hear. Um. You just hear the words, so hungry. I'm sorry, they didn't come through. What'd you say? <laughs> it cut out. I hope it cut out. Oh, I was going to say it again. Right. Yeah, Ready? It literally cut out right when you said it. So hungry. It, can't hear it. It's doing it again. Can't it's hear doing it. it on purpose. It on purpose. So hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> or so hungry. Something so like hungry. that. Well, what, what, uh, I, I was hungry as well. Um, I'm not anymore. Uh, but, um, what, what, what are you, what are you hungry for? Eating us. <laughs> Come again. <laughs> it's not coming you, through. You, you can't whisper. It doesn't work. <laughs> okay. You, you hear it. You hear a whisper on the wind. Yep that says eating us. Eating us? What? Something what? has been eaten. Them? What is, what's, what's, what's eating you? And on that one you hear again, bam, 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 bam. And then the, the voice on the wind says, don't let him. Is, is the pain coming from anywhere specific or is it just like echoing throughout the entire house? It seems to be coming now from every single wall. Like the whole okay. structure is shaking. I swear if the walls start bleeding. The, well, the don't let him voice, is that coming from what I think is the dwarf or that's another voice? You can't tell. Um, it's, it's definitely a male voice. It probably has the dwarven twang to it. Whether it's the same person, you're not sure. Is it the same person you're talking to, Silek? Is it the brother? Possibly. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. Don't. Don't let him do what. What was the brother's name? Mm -hmm. You want to Steve? Uh, shouldn't be. No, you're all right now. You're fine now. Um, 
It's on the painting. I can't, I can't remember. Yeah. It is on the I, I'm just thinking because it sounds more like there's two spirits here, maybe. Mm. One in the walls and one on the wind. Yeah, or something like that. And, you know, we, we're getting confused because one saying something and then the other saying something, but we're thinking it's one thing that's saying something. That's just a guess, though. Have a pee-pee coin. Oh, there thanks, you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, oh, I nearly dropped mine. Sorry. It's, I oh, I'm it's turned into a go. guitar pick again. Oh, again. <laughs> Strange, that. Very handy. Awesome. You can never have too many of those. All right. I'll yell to Elias to, to hand me the painting. Okay. Oh, I'll hand over. So you see uh, it says Brothers Silas and Karavek Vecca. Karavek. Kuravak, is that you? Nothing. No response? No response. Silas! Is Kuravak here as well with you? No Where's response. your brother? No response. <clears throat> this is Yelena is still, me out. Yeah, is Yelena still in visual pain? She's on she's she she's on the floor, yeah. <laughs> Getting creeped out of my own house now. <laughs> There he Keep hearing is. sound. There's two doors outside, like two, not like almost covered doors, I think, according to the map. I'm going to open the one nearest to us. Yeah, Which I one? say we move together. Mm. Um, That's just together. <laughs> right. That's dead the, now. So the name, the other name on the the painting. You said you actually said two words. Was that second word part of the person's name, or is that like a last name? I that's, their, that's their surname. So Vecca is the surname. So brother one is Silas. Brother two is Karavek. Yep. Okay. Okay, I'm going to open that cupboard door. Which one? Uh, the one that was... Uh, I, I'm not in uh, full, full port, but I believe it was the one that was facing the room. Uh, facing the room with the bones in. Facing the, uh, the room with the, uh, the room. There's one sort of further down the corridor from it, on the same wall. Uh, yeah, that that one I'm there in front of. Yeah. It depends if you're ten seconds behind or not. <laughs> Is it the room the on the left one. or the room on the, the right? The the room on the right. Okay, there we go. That one. <laughs> right. Uh, We're sticking yeah. together. Right. It's it's gonna be a small room for you all to stick together. Well. So, we we'll can open stick the door in the just, corridor. You know, yeah, we'll yeah. open the door and like, you know, just be around each other. Okay, so everyone piles down here as much as they can, <laughs> including the bear. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Everyone's like, I don't want to be on my own anymore. <laughs> uh, and I, uh, Elias, you open the door. Um, it's a simple chamber. It's it's a two by two. I had to check. Uh, it has a worn hide rug covered with muddy stains before the door next to a rickety chair. There is a thick blanket covering the opening uh, to the south. So basically on the other side of the door there's, there was a curtain, a blanket. Most of the bottom is all tattered and bare. As you've pulled that aside, it's a welcome mat. It says, hello. Uh, <laughs> then there's a front door, then there's a chair <clears throat> with an old blanket on it. All morphine. So you open the door, there's the welcome mat, then the curtain, behind the curtain is the, the yep. door with the, with the blanket. And what is in there is um, 
an outside door, basically. An outside door in the middle of the room? Uh, no, in the wall. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, so, right. So I'm, I'm getting elevations right, okay, so... It would be up a story then. It would right? be up a story, yeah. So obviously it's further up the hill at that point, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So maybe this is the start of the path. Start of the path to uh, wherever it is that they were pillaging. Yeah, wherever they found. Maybe we um, explore a bit further rather than leave. Yes, I, I agree. Just, just so I'm, I'm clear, because I've, I I've, think I've got myself turned around. The, the room with the bones in. Mm -hmm. Which one was that? That is top left room. I put your top left room. room. Okay, okay. So we haven't yet done the bottom room. We haven't no. looked in there yet. Okay, and we haven't looked in the other cupboard size room either. No. Y Elaine is still visibly in pain, isn't she? Um, <clears throat> well, she was laying on the floor. Tolkus caught her from yeah. my, so I think by now it's passed. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, let's let's quickly look in the other in the other rooms. Should we do the big room first or the cupboard? Cupboard. Yeah, start with the cupboard first. Yeah, start with the smaller. Oh, the, the, welcome, the welcome mat, is it, does it say hello in Dwarven? I, I think so. It says, say hello, friend. <coughs> and, 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 oh, oh, speak friend and anything. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I like, so I like to look down if it's in Dwarven and look back at the group and say, oh, it says hello. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hello mat, a welcome mat. <laughs> it says welcome. He'll chuckle to himself. Okie dokie. Uh, I hope so. No, it's not. Okay, so you want to go to the other cupboard, yeah? Yes, please. It's, it's Elias. You didn't go out the front door. I'll be right behind him. Okay, that's fine. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Right. So, you open the door. Yep, I the, do. This chamber contains uh, heavy shelving and still holds uh, various debris uh, accumulated over decades of habitation. It's basically the storage closet. Okay. <laughs> so rotting, rotting food stuff, rotting objects. Yep. I'll do a quick pass over with Arcane Sight to yeah. see if there is anything magical. Uh, mm. Otherwise, we'll move on to the other room. Nothing magical. Um, you see an old pair of snowshoes and that kind of thing. Do you know what? I might take those. <laughs> <laughs> You see some old dwarven tennis rackets. I I I I will take that boots just to make my life easier. Okay. Yeah. The dwarven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess Silic kind of eyes him and thinks, "Oh, maybe. Uh, I wonder if those fit me." <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then you want to try the room at the south. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's. There we go. So you put your hand on the door handle. You twist it. Twist the handle. It creaks and you open the door. And we'll find out what happens. Next oh, no. oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It's creepy. Yeah, this was lucky. This we didn't go in that room first. <laughs> yeah. Well, well done, Dave. This was uh, this was awesome. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get sleep. Mike. Yeah, the the thing that I, I I said earlier. I mean, Jeff was kind of right, cabin in the woods. And then the the other thing for me was to take it that step further, because it had the tree, and it's <laughs> a cabin, and all those things dead. banging is evil dead. And I was like, <laughs> oh, this is evil dead. <laughs> yeah. I'm probably going to be so, used to this by seeing really well those done. films. Oh, yeah, so no. you're I'm not really a horror fan. Sharon, your oh. weekend homework is to watch Evil Dead 2, the original, and then watch the, 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 the Darkness one. No. 
No, That's Evil Dead 2. No, Army Darkness yeah. Part 3. No, I was going to no, I get scared easily. I, I actually sleep. quite like the remake as well. I thought that was very good. Yeah. And then go and oh. watch um, Ash versus Evil Dead, the TV series, because that's brilliant. And Ash, if you're watching this for, for whatever reason, <laughs> if, if you and Xena want to come and play, um, and like Sam yeah. Raimi uh, or your brother, <laughs> just get in touch. We'll yeah, go play D&D awesome. &D with, with Sam Raimi. Let's do it. Okay. We talk about Spider Man, we talk about Toby Maguire, we talk about Evil Dead. Ruby. Yeah. Bruce, you want you want to come play? Let's do it, man. We'll we're, we're, have some fun. We're rolling three D twenties. Big fan of Bruce Campbell. This <laughs> is my boomstick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait until next week now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I can turn off my spooky sounds because you can't hear it, but the, the oh. Twitch audience can. <laughs> yeah. So I've had that playing. You're scaring him away. Well, the best was, all you hear on the wind is a... <laughs> <laughs> what? What are we here? <laughs> it kind of breaks the effect because we can't even see. Mm, yeah. But Twitch, yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, all right, cool. cool. Right. Uh, I just remember we forgot to do the giveaway. <laughs> oh, no. We'll see you two next week. We'll, 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 you know what? That's not a bad plan. Uh, we will do two giveaways next week. Um, I will remind you. More reason to tune in. Here That's in. right. More reason to tune in next week. Come back. Tell your friends. Hey, yeah. Share it. Spread the word. Double, double giveaway. There's a double whammy. Um, double giveaway. Double giveaway next week. And we'll find out what happens in the Evil Dead House in Pathfinder. Um, which, which should be cool. It should be good. Uh, awesome. Thank Love you, it. everyone, for joining us live. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you very much. If you're not watching us on YouTube, check out YouTube. We've got a ton of different stories and shows. We do mini painting. We do interviews with uh, content creators and all kinds of people behind the scenes. We've got loads of stuff coming up for June and July. Um, and if you would like to play with us, uh, or if you have a product for role-playing games, get in touch. We'd love to have you um, have you on the show. <laughs> yeah, Chav says, I get to win twice. <laughs> you know, you probably would. <laughs> yeah, he'll uh, yeah. win both of them. Chav will win. We'll just give him to Chav, it'll be fine. Uh, Steve, <laughs> can you sort out where we're going next? Uh, and... I, I will, yes, yes. And everybody else, we'll see you next week. Till then, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.